federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody which doesn't infringe a copyright under 70 new.s.c. 107. Ringo TV Reactions. Back at you again with another one. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Let's get down to work. Let's go. Y'all nigga buy that paper. Y'all nigga buy that paper. True man, I'm free, I wake up a new episode I pop out clean and be up a level though She talk to me like I'm not me, I get it though Yeah, I'm so eclectic, I'm me to the credits Roll talk down to me, they might have this in medical I'm out the league, I'm OD, they pathetic though Look how I move, I'm protected Saw these souls wanting my presence The world going through it outside, they unruly But I keep it cool, they can't press me I keep it pure with intention They see what I'm on, ain't no victim I might slide through with that top down I keep it tuned with a high power Put it on me, I'm blessed Young nigga blessed Big bag, but the sky, no stress. Keep no evil around me, can't ground me. I built it since when I had less. No hex on God, can't pause, nigga. Look at how far we progress. Whatever we doing, we keeping it fluid. I don't see a thing about that paper. On that jet, I done switch to the coast One of a kind, I've been playing that role They pay me to play me, I needed it for It's real if I said I meant what I spoke I'm legend, it's written, I shake up the city's been blocked till I'm dizzy, won't ever go broke I'm chose, I must like the way that top down I keep in tune with a high power Put it on me, I'm blessed Young nigga blessed Big bag, manifest the sky, no stress Keep no evil around me, can't ground me I built it since when I had this No hex on God, can't pause Nigga, look at how far we progress Whatever we doing, we keeping it fluid. I don't see a thing about that paper. Oh, oh, oh. Nothing about that paper. Oh, oh, oh. Nothing about that paper. TV, we in the building again for another one. Make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. We got an awesome show for you, as usual. Hassan Campbell is again in the news. And this time, we got to talk about his hypocrisy. That's right. Hassan Campbell, hypocrisy all over again. Just when you thought it was over, he came back with more and we got to get into this thing. Yesterday, we talked about the situation regarding Christian Kies. And we discussed this, that he's claiming he's a victim and so and so forward. But Hassan took it to social media to put Christian out there as if though his story don't matter. Here we have a victim putting another victim down. A victim 
that got his butt greased up by Bambata. <laughs> He's basically claiming that Christian is acting like a woman. Now, before we begin, Hassan, like, come on, fam. Like, your entire live stream is literally a copy of mine. Like, everything I said in my live stream about Christian, you regurgitated every single word. Every single thing I talked about, you talked about. I thought you're supposed to be a victim. I thought you stand up for people that are really going through the struggle. So why would you try to shame a victim? Why would you try to put Christian down as if though his story don't matter and then claim you out here trying to help the people? You're a hypocrite. First of all, fam, you ain't even qualified to talk on the matter. You're not qualified. Of all people talking about this situation, you don't supposed to be talking about it. Not you. I could talk about it. Because I'm from the outside looking in. But you claim that Bambada was greasing you up and thighed you. But yet you out here throwing shade on a man that's trying to air out what happened to him. Shouldn't he be a victim? What's going on here? And then your audience is so slow, they can't even see this. Now, you have a few of them that was like, you a hypocrite. And they were getting blocked. Everybody that was saying you're a hypocrite, you were blocking them. But the truth is you are a hypocrite. Who are you to judge anybody? Like, think about this. You're a victim who had your cheeks clapped by Bambada. Bambada put heavy, dark meat inside of you. <laughs> we're talking about black Rusty, crusty, dark, inflamed meat. What you talking about, Willis? Inside of you. And for whatever reason, you are trying to put this other brother down. Now, if I share commentary and I crack jokes, that's one thing. Because I'm on the outside looking in on this situation. But you... You had your booty scratched. <laughs> they were blazing your, your, your butt, bro. They blazed it, bro. <laughs> like Bambada was whipping your behind with a whip. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what Bambada was doing. He greased up your behind with that black grease that you find at the 99 cent store. <laughs> he greased you up and took out his Bambada whip and said <laughs> and then he thighed you. That's what happened. That's what happened. Listen. Not only did you go through the door, but Bambada went through your back door. <laughs> So you're not in a position to talk about nobody. You're not. How could you judge Christian when you got greased up? When you walked through the door? When you took the oath? Haas, we already know who you are. You walked through the door. You don't got no smoke for anything I got to say. But you got smoke for this cat? We got to roll the tapes, y'all. We got to roll the tapes and we got to get down to business because this is getting real serious. And we got to talk about this because one thing I don't like is a hypocrite. And this dude is a straight up hypocrite. So we have a special, special show tonight. That's right. A special show for you folks that want to get this truth. So again, as you come into the building, be sure to click the like button. Likes are for free, right? And also subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. It don't make no sense. You're just viewing in the clouds. 
Make sure you subscribe to the platform and support the show. Because I got a lot of haters. They watch me all day. They complain. But yet they watch me all day. <laughs> you know, they're my fans, but they act like they don't like what I do. <laughs> like, I, I don't get it, fam. You know, at the end of the day. But let's get this tape started for you. Let's, let's get this thing situated because this guy's the ultimate hypocrite. The ultimate hypocrite. And we got to talk about this thing. Because he come across as this guy that is concerned about the victims. He's acting like he's concerned about kids. He don't care about none of y'all. <laughs> he care about the numbers. And we got another video coming up. Um, I might do the video after this stream. I might do it after this stream. I might do uh, two live streams back to back. Where he was caught being a, a hypocrite again. Because... He was featured on Vlad. We got more reviews that we got to do with him on the Vlad TV podcast. We got more shows that we got to cover over there. But Hassan is a straight hypocrite, man. And I don't understand how anybody listening to this guy when he already walked through the door. You can't talk about Christian walking through the door. You can't talk about him allowing somebody to touch his meat when you allowed Bam to grease your cheeks, bro. And I don't want to hear nothing about no 12 years old, bro. You were a full-blown teenager, full-blown man. Even at 30, you're caught in photos in a photo op with Bam. You ain't put hands on him. You had all this grimy talk. You copying me, bro. You watch everything I do. Your whole live stream is a mere copy of me, bro. Like every word you said, word for word is my words, bro. Your audience is supposed to be over here. I'm the real deal, bro. You don't even got no original thought. You literally copied every word I shared from my last stream. You just regurgitated every single thing. You didn't add nothing new at all. But because your audience is slow, eventually they're going to they're going to realize who I am and they're going to come over here, they're going to unsubscribe from you. They're going to subscribe over here because they recognize that Ringo TV is the real deal. They're going to recognize that. Anyway, let's get to this tape so that we can pretty much get down to business because, again, Hassan Campbell is not supposed to be talking about this guy. This is the last topic that Hassan should be talking about. He should not be talking about anybody that been through what Christian been through. So let's get to these tapes, figure out what we got to do here, because the information is going to shock you, man. The information is going to shock you. So let me get this volume up. This says which file is this? Because I got two files I want to share. Share two files, and then we're going to break down a lot more. Put a one in the chat if you can hear my voice clear. Everything is good. Put a one in the chat so that we know everything is right. And make sure you get the likes up in the building. You have 275 people viewing. There's only 100 likes. We need those likes to match the views. Stop being a hater in the clouds and click the like button. Stop being a hater and click the like button. We're tired of playing these little games. I'll just go on a video break and we can just watch music videos for the rest of the night. Do you want me to get to the show? Or do you want me to go to music break? Because normally I do music break later on in the show. I'll just go to music break early and wait for you to decide. I got all night to do this. When you come to the show, click the like button. It's so simple to do, but people be sitting in the clouds hating. I don't want to click the like button. So why are you here? Why are you here? You like the things that I talk about. You like the content I share but you're a hater. Which one is it? Do you want to see the platform grow or not? I don't understand viewers at sometimes. Like, you have a responsibility as a viewer. If I'm providing you the best content on YouTube, what are you sitting there for? You're listening. Okay, you want to hear what we're going to talk about. Click the like button. What's so hard about that? Well, I don't want to click the like button. So why are you here? Does that make sense? So 
That being said, we're going to go on music break. That way people can decide what they're going to do. We're going to go on a music break first, and then we'll get back to the show. We're not here to play any games. We're here to get down to business. So we're going to give you time to make up your mind on exactly what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, because we're not here to play games. We are the best. Nobody in these YouTube streets provide this level of visuals. No one in these YouTube streets can provide this level of commentary. Nobody is able to do this but Ringo TV. So I'm going to give you time to get those likes up. And you can leave if you're upset. That's not going to bother me. We will be here all night. We got business to take care of. And those who rock with the platform will remain. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go to video. Let's go. Help me, please. Help me. Help me. Somebody, please. Help me. In a world. Oh. 
If the likes are not matching the views, we will go to another music break. Simple as that. Those are the rules. This is pretty much how we're doing things. When you come to the platform, understand that I'm here to work. I'm here to do what I got to do. At the same time, you have a responsibility. If the like button is not being clicked, nobody knows about the show. When you're not clicking the like button, I'm not motivated to continue to talk. I'm not going to waste my time providing you all of this information if you're not helping to move this video into the algorithm. Do you understand that? Because a lot of you will go to other platforms and you'll get their likes to 5,000 and they don't provide you nothing but garbage. What I'm showing you is real content. Now, those of you who are joining in, we're talking about the hypocritical response of Hassan Campbell to Christian and what it really means. So I want to roll the tape. I want to show you what he did, what he said, so that you can see for yourself that he's not qualified to talk about these issues because he's supposed to be a victim. And for whatever reason, anybody that's a victim, he attacks them. 
anybody that's a victim, he try to minimize their story to boost himself. That's what he do. When Cassie got awarded the money from Diddy, what did he do? He went out there to the, to the Bronx and went on a rampage and got shot and had bottles thrown at him. Why? Because he wanted attention. He was jealous of Cassie's judgment. You understand? So now anyone who comes out to talk about Hollywood, he began to talk about the door. He began to talk about, oh, you know, you were there. You're a grown man. How could you let this happen? When he himself was a willing participant with Africa Bambata. You understand? He was a willing participant as a teenager. He knew right from wrong. And he allowed that man to do what he did to him. And even as an adult, for seven years straight, all he did was talk about Bambata. He never pressed charges on Bambata to get arrested. He never filed a lawsuit on Bambata. He never did none of these things. For seven years, he'd been running the numbers up on YouTube, making a whole lot of money, but haven't done anything for any victims. We're going into 2024. Hassan Campbell have not started any organizations, any programs that brings awareness for children that may have been touched by a school teacher, by an uncle. He haven't done anything. He haven't started anything. You have never heard of Hassan Campbell going into the streets of New York, going to the projects and bring awareness to victims of this kind of abuse. There is no record of him doing any outreach programs, going to schools, uh, nothing. So what really is his purpose? Just to run the numbers up and keep the attention on him. So for him to make a video talking about this guy in the manner that he did, it's very hypocritical because he didn't do anything about the predator that greased him up and put heavy meat inside of him. And this is what we got to address on the platform. So I'm going to play the tape and we got other tapes that we're going to play, but I got to play these particular clips because these clips are vital to the commentary that we want to talk about. So let me tune this up real quick and get down to the point with this. Hold on a second. All right. So we got that set. Volume is good. All right. Let's play this tape and see what's going on here. Let's go. I want to speak on it. And the good news is that they don't even have to believe me. Hopefully they would, but even if they don't, they can hear this person. Since sexual harassment started, I've carried many recorder devices on me, keychains, pens, um, thumb drives with a, a charged battery that get six, seven, eight hours, all the above. So I have the conversations. I really want to air that that shit out because it bothers me when I'm alone at night. Like, man, they, the world is celebrating this person and they don't even know the shady and predatory way in which this person moves. So he's a grown man. And there's another grown man that that's gay, that likes straight men. Most gay they don't want other gay they want to straight turn a straight man out. So you kept going around a dude that was gay, that wanted to turn you out. And instead of not going around him or, or chin checking him like a man, because you're two men, you brought some recordings to entrap him. Because if you showed him signs that you didn't want what he was doing to you, he wouldn't feel so comfortable keep on doing it because he know that your energy is off. So he gonna move on to the next one. But you kept going around swinging your ass in front of him. And the way that, you know, predators resent the prey that gets away. So when you don't say yes. How he calling a grown man a predator when he's a grown man 
They both grown men. If they indulge in sex, they'll be sword fighting. Huh? When you don't say, okay, I'll acquiesce and... Hold up, look who's talking. You talking to the 12-year-old little boy? You talking to the 12-year-old little boy that the grown man was coming after? That's who you talking to? Yeah. That's who's talking. You talking about a grown man versus a 12-year-old little boy. We talking about a grown man that wanted to be in Hollywood, so he stayed around the door and tried to maneuver his way around the door. Now that you heard him, ladies and gentlemen, it's very clear that Hassan Campbell is a hypocrite. He's a straight up hypocrite and he's not qualified to talk about this man. Now, I already done made a live stream about Christian. I made a video about it already. Um, Hassan Campbell copied everything that I've talked about. If you look at my live stream that I made about Christian and the allegations he brought against somebody in Hollywood, and then you look at Hassan's live stream, you will hear the exact same thing. Like he literally watched my entire show, listened to all the key points that I brought up and mimicked everything. He's even using my other method where I talk about they live. Remember you put on the shades and you could see he's even using that now. Like everything that I do, he try to mimic. And this is what these YouTubers do, but they claim that they're big. But have you heard Hassan Campbell respond to any of the things that I shared about him? No. He got smoke for all these other channels because those channels are not really bringing nothing. They're not bringing no heat. The things that I'm talking about and addressing, he can't respond to it. Why? Because he fears the truth. How could he address this guy and say he's a grown man? Because somebody called him out in his live chat and was like, well, what about you? And he tried to make it seem like, oh, I was 12 years old when Bam was trying to touch me. You weren't 12 years old, fam. You were a grown man. You were of age. You knew right from wrong. And you allowed another man to grease you up and put heavy meat on your back. You allowed him to thigh you, bro. And you kept going back. You went to Bam's door. You went in his house and you said that when Bam brought out the black book, that he showed you photos of other young men in the neighborhood. That's what you said, Haas. So why you kept going back to his house after he showed you a book of naked men, why would you do that? How dare you talk about another man and what he did when you worse? You kept going back even after Bam got stabbed. Even after Bam got stabbed and you knew he was a predator, you went to the hospital to see him. And he gave you a photo of the young man that did it and your job was to take him out. Come on now. You a hypocrite, fam. You're not even supposed to be talking about nobody. Like, there, there's no reason for you to be talking about anything because you a hypocrite, bro. You a predator, fam. You the same guy that went on Mav Hoffa's broadcast and said that you were touching kids, bro. Like, how you gonna talk about this man when you were on Mav broadcast saying that you touch kids, bro? This is what you said. So how could you talk about another man when you violated kids already, bro? What about those kids? What about their trauma? Why are you not addressing that? Why are you not reaching out to the, the kids you touched who are now adults in their 30s? Why are you not reaching out to them? Because you don't care. So it's okay for you to be a predator, but you got smoke for all the other predators. When you were trained by Africa Bambada to be a predator. What about the victims that you created? Why don't you address that? 
is because you can't. So what you do is you dance around all the topics to get all the attention off yourself and put it on to other people. You busy talking about Kanye West. You busy talking about Mano. You busy talking about uh, this Christian guy. Fam, talk about yourself, bro. Talk about your hypocrisy. You're not in a position to talk to nobody about nothing, bro. Your name no good. You up on Vlad TV. You walk through the door. You had all this talk about the door, the door. Well, you went through the door. You paid the price. You took the oath. How could you talk, bro? And why your audience is so delusional that they can't see through the smoke and mirrors? You had the nerve to disrespect China Mac. We're going to bring out the tapes, bro. I got all the tapes. You try to call China Mac a culture vulture, but you went up on Vlad TV. How do you justify that? How do you justify trying to ish on China Mac, who is more street than Vlad TV, and you try to basically check him and disrespect him when he grew up in the hood? Vlad TV didn't grow up in the hood, but you went through the door because you wanted a check, but you expect people to take you serious, bro? Nobody should be taking you serious, man. Like seriously, you're a clown at this point. You out here singing and talking when you out here violating and acting wild, talking gangster, talking about you got the shooters and all this other stuff and you didn't do nothing to Bambada, bro. You didn't put no hands on him. In your live stream, you saying that dude should have put hands on the producer that did whatever he did to him. Well, how come you didn't put hands on Bambada? How come you gave Bambada a pass? How come you took photos with Bambada? Talk to me about that. Come on, man. This guy's a joke, man. Like, yo, you disrespecting this man. Now, look, again, I had my criticism to say about Christian. I could say that because I'm on the outside looking in. But this dude is a predator. This dude, Hassan, is a straight predator, bro. This, Let me tell you something, man. There's a video on YouTube I can't even show you because they go against the guidelines. There's a shocking, disturbing video of Hassan Campbell talking crazy about kids, bro, about what he'll do to some 12-year-old girl, bro, about how he'll put heavy meat on her, bro. A disturbing video, man. And y'all taking this dude seriously? Not only that, he talked about putting heavy meat in your sons, bro. How can you take this dude serious? How could you look at him as some sort of freedom fighter like he care about these kids? He don't care about nobody kids. Like I said, there's a video on YouTube where Hassan was talking reckless about putting meat in kids, bro. There's no forgiveness for that. Y'all know that already. There's no forgiveness. Once you cross that line, there's no repentance. I don't want to hear about you sorry. I don't want to hear I'm sorry. I don't want to hear my bad or oh you misunderstood my point no there's no point you're not supposed to be talking about no kids you're not and you a father you're not supposed to be listen all you listen all you got to do is search for it just search for Hassan Campbell talks about 12 year old girls or putting heavy meat on kids just look for it it's out there on YouTube I'm not playing it on my channel because I know the rules you know what I mean? There's rules to this. Certain things you can't put out on the air. Like that? I wouldn't play that. Just like that other video where you see him in video with another dude and he in the street and he's out there talking about, yo, you know, you making me feel like I'm gay. Why are you touching me? Why are you holding on me? Why are you out there with him, bro? That's the question. Why you are out there with dude in the street at night? Why you were with him? Why weren't you with your woman and your kids? Why are you out in the street with a man, bro? And I don't know if the dude played for the other team or not. I don't know. But in that video, it was very questionable. Why were you in a video live streaming talking about he make you feel like you gay? Why would you even say that, bro? And you talking about Christian? You're not supposed to be talking about Christian, man. You're not in a position to talk about nothing. You're not here for the people. And, and what's so crazy is when I bring out that China Mac video, he destroyed you in that video. 
In that interview, he destroyed you, fam. Because you are out there trying to disrespect him for being a culture vulture because he's Asian. There's a lot of Asian dudes right now in New York that sound just like the average black guy in these Brooklyn streets. You would look at dude, he Asian. But dude is from the hood just like everybody else. He didn't grow up in China. He grew up right in the slums with everybody else. And he got, he get respect. He grew up with us. But you disrespecting him, but yet you went to Vlad and you walked through the door. Vlad didn't grow up in the hood. China Mac did. I don't know China Mac. I don't know what he about, but based on that tape that we're gonna review, you tried to disrespect him as a culture vulture. But where was all that smoke for Vlad TV? I bet you was up there apologizing to him, telling him, sorry, massa, sorry for talking about you because you walked through the door. But now you out here trying to disrespect the, the uh, Christian guy, Kiez, because of his story. Let's get back to this tape, y'all. Let's get back to this tape because this right here, we're going to break this thing down. There's two clips I want to break down and we're going to get into some more commentary. Because this right here, you got to deal with these type of issues, man. You got to deal with these kind of issues. You cannot have this guy out here talking about Christian Kia's story when he's a predator. You cannot do that, fam. This man must be held accountable for his activity, too. If Kiez was uh, had situations with sexual harassment in the industry, then what about the, the people in which Hassan violated? What about those people? That's not gone away. We got to talk about it. It's not gone away. Those, are, those were kids that you touched. You said this on the Mav Hopper pl platform. That's what you said. You know? Let me see if we can find the tape before we get into this. Let me see if we can find the tape. Because I don't got no time to be playing, man. I don't like playing these games, man. These games got to stop. You got to stop the hypocrisy, fam. Seriously. Let me see if I can find this tape. I got so many different tapes here, fam. So many different tapes. Uh, here we go. Let me see if we could bring this into the stream. Check this out, y'all. Hey, study pedophilia. Mm. It's like, listen to me. Study petty. You treading on listen, dangerous listen waters. Listen to me. Now I gotta ask you. He said you treading on dangerous waters. Why would you tell another man to study pedophilia? What kind of question is that, fam? Why would I have to go and study something as sick as that, bro? Why? So hold up, you. So hold up, Haas. You telling me you study this? So you sit around studying the mind of a pedophile. You telling the other brother who have kids to go study this? Why would any man want to go study that sick behavior? Let's hear what he got to say, man. Listen to me. I have to ask you. Definitely. As a victim of that. As a victim of that. Listen. Were you ever pushed in that direction? When I was a kid, I'm going to say this again because I said this, I was mimicking what was done to me. Mm. Children, I was touching. Wow. As a child, I was touching other children. Now, this is where the videos was manipulated on the, inf the internet, yeah. and they start playing with the videos. As a child, yes, because I was touched at an early age, yeah. and it was continuously touching. I went on to touch other children. That's what so you thought was normal. When did... When did you stop? When did I stop touching other children? Yes. Like, uh... Ooh. 
as a child, I touched children, but as I got older, I had girlfriends. So it switched over into me having girlfriends. Right. This is crazy, man. See, this is why, this is why you're supposed to have, this is why you're supposed to have your, your, um, your headphones on. Maybe I should put my, my headphones on. <laughs> I mean, let me put my headphones on, fam. Let me put my headphones on. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Because I said a lot of good stuff there. We're going to put the headphones on, fam. We're going to do this. Ringo TV bloopers. Okay, now, how long was I talking to myself? <laughs> 10 minutes? You kidding me? Wow. Okay, so then we're going to have to start back and cook. It stopped at how long Haas had been touching kids. Oh, okay. All right. All right. At least I'm not the only one this happened to. I see this happen to a lot of YouTubers, and I be laughing in the background. I'll be like, <laughs> I'm like, yo. I seen one particular YouTuber. He was talking for about 30 minutes straight before he realized his volume was off. You know what I mean? But, hey. Things happen. But anyway, let's rewind back what he said, and I'm going to go right back. Because, see, here's the thing. Even though I was talking, I'm not like other content creators that talk, forget their train of thought, and lose it all. Oh, no. We're going to rewind back time, and I'm going to go right back in. <laughs> we got, we, listen, we got time, fam. We got time. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. But as a child, I was touching other children. You remember because about Now, you heard what he said right there. He was touching kids. Let's get back to the tapes. What age touch. the girlfriends kicked in? The girlfriends, um... Oh, let's rewind that back. Hold on a second. Let's go back. You ain't missed nothing. Even though I was running my mouth and you ain't hear me and I was just there getting angry and going crazy, <laughs> trust and believe. Trust and believe. 
I am going to give you the same exact fire all over again. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's like, listen to me, study petty... You trending on listen, dangerous listen waters, because now I got to ask you. Listen to me. I have to ask you. Definitely. As a victim of that, as a victim of that, mm. were you ever pushed in that direction? When I was a kid, I'm going to say this again, because I said this, I was mimicking what was done to me. Mm. Children, I was touching. Wow. As a child, I was touching other children. Now, this is where the videos was manipulated. No, dude, no videos was manipulated, man. You just told Haas, you just told Math that you were touching kids. He just told you that. So there's no mistake in this. And you're telling grown men, oh, study, study pedophilia. Why would I want to go study that? Why would I want to go study something as sick as that? Why? Why would I want to do that? Why would any masculine, strong man, father figure, would want to go and study the mind of a sicko who's out there touching kids? Why would I want to go study that? Why would you even promote that? Right there, the guys were supposed to check you and be like, hold on, fam, why are you telling us to go study something sick as this? So this is what you do, Haas? You sit around trying to study the mind of a sicko on, on social media, like trying to figure out how to manipulate kids? That's what you do? Because that's exactly how it sounds. Now, they ask you a simple question, and you took so long to answer it. And see, this is why we got to talk about these things. You think because, oh, I had myself on mute that I'm not going to continue to cook? Oh, no, we, this is cooking season right now. We're going to get right back to the taste because every time I hear your voice, my words and everything come right back to my memory. I got a great memory. You were asked a question and you fumbled. Let's get to the tape. On the, the internet yeah. and they start playing with the videos. As a child, yes, because I was touched at an early age. Because you were touched at an early age, what? Yeah. And it was continuously touching. I went on to touch other children. That's what so you thought was normal. When did... When did you stop? When did you stop? When did you stop touching these kids? When did you stop, Hassan? Hassan, when did you stop? When did you say, okay, I'm done. I've been rehabil rehabilitated. I'm free. I'm no longer having these urges or desires. When did you stop? Now watch, ladies and gentlemen, watch exactly the pause as he thinks about it, as he contemplate what to say, and he just have this moment of silence. Check it out. When did I stop touching other children? Yes. Like, uh... Uh... Wow. As a child, I touched children, but as I got older, I had girlfriends, so it switched over into me having girlfriends. Which mean that Hassan was touching boys. Do you see that, ladies and gentlemen? Which mean that Hassan was touching boys. Now, I don't know if this got recorded on the tape. Maybe I was still talking to myself with the channel muted. Maybe it was. That's why I'm repeating everything that I was saying before. He just said it switched over to girls. Now, if something switched over to girls, that mean he was touching boys. And notice, notice this, ladies and gentlemen, he never answered the question. He never answered the the question. He never said, okay, guys, I stopped at 12 years old. I stopped at 15 years old. Well, I stopped at 17 years old. He never stopped. So up to now, we don't know what age Hassan actually stopped. But yet he's trying to talk about Christian and his particular situation. Come on, man. That's unacceptable behavior, y'all. That's unacceptable behavior for him to be talking about that man when he was out here being a predator. Let's get to those tapes. Let's go. Right. But as a child, I was touching other children. You remember because about you what age touched. the girlfriends kicked in? Do you remember the age of the girlfriends that kicked in? He was now asked, do you remember the age when you start having girlfriends? Let's see if he responds and answers the question. The girlfriends, um, oh, I was having girlfriends. I guess I started having girlfriends. If, if that's the case, if my uncle came over, let's say with Darshan, and Darshan might have been a year younger than me or whatever the case may be. We was playing house. As a matter of fact. So you were playing house with your own cousin. He just said of his uncle, 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 uncle. That So then Darshan would be his cousin, 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 cousin. Do you see the difference now? The man asked him, at what age did the girlfriends kick in? He never answered the question. So we don't know at what age did Hassan start having girlfriends. We don't know. We don't know what age he actually stopped touching children. We don't know. 
he never answered the question. And I think that Math Hopper did a terrible job. With that particular interview, you did a terrible job, sir, because you were supposed to press him. You were supposed to say, hold on, fam. No, 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 no. Don't try to dodge this one. We need an answer. When did you stop touching these kids? When did you stop? Because he never answered the question. When did you have girlfriends? I didn't ask you about your cousin, bro. Now you're telling us you're touching your cousin. Now this, this is getting even more sick now. So you telling me you having relations with your, your own cousin? So your cousin was your girlfriend? At what age was this going down? Because in his video, somebody pressed him and was like, yo, why are you going in on Christian? And he was like, oh, I was 12 years old when bam. No, you weren't, fam. No, you weren't. You were a full-blown teenager. You were getting molested willingly. I don't, I'm not even going to say you were getting molested because I don't even believe your story. You was a willing participant, just like Christian. Just like Christian was a willing participant in Holly Weird, you was a willing participant with Bambada. You're in no position. Listen, you're in no position to talk about nothing because you were out here being a predator. What about those kids? What about their mothers? What about the family? What about the people you hurt? What about those people? You don't want to talk about it, but you got time to talk about everybody else. Why you ain't addressing everybody else? Why you ain't addressing the things that I talk about? Why you ain't addressing the videos that New Breed made about you? You ain't addressing nothing that we're talking about. You have all this smoke for all these other platforms because you know, you know they're not going to be able to make sense of the things that you're doing. They're not going to be able to make sense. That's why you, that's why it's easy for you to respond. But you won't respond or utter my name. Why? Because what you, your greatest fear, Hassan, is that your audience is going to come over here and hear the truth. If your viewers were to come over here and listen to my last stream that I did about Christian Kies, you regurgitated everything that I said word for word. Literally, everything that I had to say, you regurgitated. Nothing new. You didn't add no new commentary at all. You just literally studied my video stream and did the same thing I did. Come on, man. So you're guilty of touching these kids. So before you talk about anybody you got to judge yourself. Did you overcome your tendencies? Did you overcome? Or were you still doing this throughout your walk in life? That's what we got to ask these questions. Because he's out here trying to put Christian on blast when he's guilty of these things. Come on, man. Nobody should be taking this guy serious, man. Let me see what else we could find on this, man. Let me see what else we could find. Because it gets even more... More sinister, fam. It gets even more sinister as we go. Let me see if I can pull this up. Hold on again. Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, okay. Da, da, da. Not that one. All right. Here we go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we heard what he had to say on Math Hoffa's program. Let's hear what he had to say here. Because some of these dudes in the Zulu Nation, including me, have been molested by BAM. And anybody who has been molested cannot be trusted with kids. And I would tell you that even about myself. Anybody who has been molested cannot be trusted with kids. Wow. Because you have a habit of when you're touched, you touch other people's kids. You heard it there, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it for yourself. You heard it for yourself. So based on the tapes, it's very clear and evident that Hassan cannot be trusted with kids. He said it himself. He said it himself. So who is he to judge anybody? Who is he to judge Christian by saying that Christian should have put hands on this executive producer when he himself didn't put hands on Bam and he was touching kids? Make it make sense, y'all. Make it make sense. Let's get back to this tapes. Let's break it down. I want to speak on it. And the good news is that they don't even have to believe me. Hopefully they would, but even if they don't, they can hear this person. Since sexual harassment started, I've carried many recorder devices on me. Now, now think, look at how his facial expression is. Now think about this. Christian and Hassan are the same. Both of these guys got the same story. Both of them claim they were victims. 
Both of them claimed they were touch. None of them talked about it in the early age. None of them talked about arresting these guys. None of these guys filed lawsuits. They waited for the statute of limitations to be non, non, null and void. Both of these guys are the same. They got the same story. But the thing is, Christian is now talking about his story. Ha's been talking about his story for seven years. Who's the hypocrite, y'all? For seven years, Hassan been using Bam's name to get famous on YouTube, to bring about emotions and, you know, play on the hurt and the pain of real victims, real people out there. Those are the people who watch his show, people that been hurt. And up to now, for seven years, he enriched himself on YouTube, never once had a speaking engagement to help children. When has Hassan went to a public school to talk to kids? When? When did he actually do this? He never did it. And this is a problem. This is a serious problem because he's not out here bringing no change to these conditions. But he used it to enrich himself. But he's trying to minimize Christian's story because he's jealous once again. Why? Because Christian is getting the attention. Just like Cassie's situation. He was jealous of that. He went to the projects and got shot and had bottles thrown at him. So now, because Christian is in the news and his videos is getting pushed in the algorithm, he want to steal the spotlight to bring the attention back to himself. And that's what he's doing. Chains, pens, um, thumb drives with a, a charge battery that get six, seven, eight hours, all the above. So I have the conversations. I really want to air that that shit out because it bothers me when I'm alone at night. Like, man, they, the world is celebrating this person and they don't even know the shady and predatory way in which this person moves. Now, again, Hassan is not qualified to talk about this person. The only people that are credible to talk about Christian Kies are people that are on the outside looking in and they're able to properly critique what he's doing. I personally believe that Christian, although his story, I believe his story is real, but I also believe that he was a willing participant because in Hollywood, this is what they do. I believe he just got tired of doing it. There was a fallout. Now he want to expose whoever the person is. You understand? This is something that he most likely been doing. Just like Hassan was a willing participant with Bam. He was a willing participant. He knew right from wrong, y'all. Don't tell me that as 12 years old, as a young man, that you don't know it's wrong for another man to be squeezing your butt cheeks and putting grease and thighing you and putting heavy meat inside you. Don't tell me that you don't know that that's wrong and, and you were molested. No, uh-uh. You were a willing participant because you went to his house. Where was your mother and father? How is it that all the kids are at Bam house all day and nobody ain't doing nothing? Nah, y'all were doing this because you wanted to. So, he's a grown man. Yeah, he did change the age several times. He wasn't 12 because, like I said, in various videos, he said he was 14 to through 16 years old. You understand? So now he's saying he's 12 because he, again, ladies and gentlemen of the court of public opinion, he want you to believe that he was so young that he was dumb and couldn't understand right from wrong. That doesn't make any sense. At 12 years old, you know what's right from wrong. Not only that, you even said that Bam had a house in Connecticut or something along those lines and how you went there. How does a 12-year-old boy go to Connecticut to see Bam? Come on. You are a grown man, a grown man, and you were cook hooking up with that dude, going to Connecticut, back and forth to his house. And yet you had the nerve to talk about Michael Jackson being a predator? Come on, man. And there's another grown man that that's gay, that likes straight men. Most gay they don't want other gay they want to straight turn a straight man out. So you kept going around a dude that but, but hold on, you kept going around Bam.
You kept going around Bam. See, you cannot talk about Christian when you're a hypocrite, bro. This is why when it comes to commentary and criticism, I got to offer my thoughts. You cannot go out here criticizing this man, bro. You're not qualified to talk about these topics because you kept going back to Bam. Even after Bam got stabbed because another young man, according to your words, you said that this young man was drunk and he woke up and Bam was topping him off. This is what you said. How you know all these stories? How you know all this sick stuff, bro? Were you there watching the whole time? You even talked about how Bam, when you would go into the bathroom, Bam would walk into the bathroom with you and say, oh, this is how you got to use the toilet and this is how you take a leak and how he would tell you, oh, you got to beat the drum. This is what men's supposed to do. Come on, man. You were being groomed by Bam. Bam didn't violate you, fam. I don't believe your story not one bit, bro. But see, the problem is anytime real victims come out, you always got something to say about them. As if though their story don't matter. When you're just like him, you and Christian are the same. Y'all got the same story. You both protect predators because you had ample amount of time to put Bam in prison. But you didn't want that. You didn't call the police not one time. You were afraid for your life. You even said that if you were to tell the story about Bam early, that your mom would have died. This is what you said. No different from Christian. He didn't talk about it because he knew that if he say something, he won't have no jobs in Hollywood. So y'all both the same. Both of y'all were protecting the predator, knowing good and well that these predators are in the industry taking advantage of people. So the only reason why Christian is coming out with his story now is because there was a fallout and he's tired. He's tired right now and he's trying to get some get back on these people. But he's been tolerating this kind of abuse for many, many years. Just like you. You're the hypocrite, fam. And you're not in no position to be talking about nobody. And that's why we got to do this content to clear the air. Let's go. It was gay that wanted to turn you out. And instead of not going around him or, or chin checking him. Why would you tell him to chin check him? I'm the one who said that in my video, fam. I'm the one who said that in my video. New Breed told you to do the same thing. How come you ain't do that? You talking about who need to chin check him, but yet you're in a photo with Bam. You're in a photo with Bam, fam. Let me see if I can find that photo, man. Let me see if I can find that photo because there's a photo of this dude with Bam, y'all. So I'm trying to figure this out. Let me see if I have it here. Where in the world is that photo? I know I have it here somewhere. Here it go. Okay. Here's the photo. This is Hassan Campbell with Bam, the predator that he claimed thighed him. How come you ain't do what you claim he should do? He's right there. Come on. How come you ain't put hands on him? See, it's because you're not really about that life. See, you want everybody else to put hands on everybody, but you ain't doing it. And this is the problem. This is the hypocrisy. You're not willing to do what you claim others should do because you're a hypocrite. And this photo, you're in your 30s. You didn't put no hands on Bambada. You seem to be buddy up with him. Now, how could a man that's in his 30s in this photo, you 47 today, how could you be taking photos with this man Yet you want to tell the world he was molesting you. You a hypocrite, bro. You don't have no credibility to talk about nothing. You're a joke at this point. You shouldn't be talking about nobody. You're standing next to your predator. Next to the man that was greasing you up, put heavy meat on your back. You're with him right there. Being cool. You don't, there, there's no urgency of, oh, this is a predator. And you're the same guy that talk about how gangster you are and how you from the streets and got the shooters. But you ain't do nothing. That's how I know you're not about that life. All you do is talk on social media, but yet in the real world, you're not about that life, man. But yet you telling Christian he should have punched the guy in the face? 
but you didn't do that to your abuser? Come on, man, you a hypocrite. Like a man, because y'all two men, you brought some recordings to entrap him. So hold up, now you're saying that because he recorded the incident, he's doing it to entrap his predator? Which side are you on, man? Are you on the predator side or the victim side? Like, I don't get it. What? So, so in your mind, it would have been better for him not to have a recording. So it's entrapment for him to record these conversations. Which side are you on? This is what I mean, ladies and gentlemen. He's not really for the victims. He support the predators because when Diddy got in his situation, the bodyguard, right? The bodyguard came out talking about Diddy's business. Hassan went live talking about the bodyguard broke the bro code in terms of talking about these issues. In other words, the bodyguard should have never talked about it because that's snitching. What? Now, of course, the bodyguard is dirty just like Diddy. All of you who are watching the bodyguard talk about all of Diddy's dirt, the bodyguard is a damn hypocrite too. Because if he was back there then listening and seeing all of this dirt go down, how come he ain't do nothing? How come he ain't call the police? How come he ain't say nothing? Because he's just like Christian who's doing what he's doing because he had a job. Everybody in the industry is hypocrites. Everybody in the industry is hypocrites and they do what they do for the dollar, bro. They do what they do for the dollar. It's just like you can have people on the nine to five grind that'll see their supervisor doing dirt and they're afraid to say something because the supervisor is also cool with people in HR and they don't want to say nothing because it's like, yo, if I say something, I might end up losing my job. And you got people that'll turn a blind eye knowing that this individual is a predator uh, 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 a person who is sexually harassing women on the job and doing all sorts of dirt. This is why I keep telling you guys, when you're on the nine to five, brothers, as tempting as it may be, leave these women alone, bro. Leave these women alone. I know you might find a sister. You want to kick it. It's convenient. You're at work. She's at work. But I'm here to tell you, fam, leave these women alone on the job. If shorty trying to holler at you off the clock or whatever the case it is, you got to tell her, look, baby, um, we can kick it outside of work, but when we at work, let's keep our distance. Let's keep everything professional because I ain't trying to lose my job. I ain't trying to get in no drama. Seriously, you got to keep it like that. You got to just go to your job, do your just do, do your nine to five, go to work, crack your jokes with your buddies at work, but leave these women alone, fam. If there's anything you could get from this live stream, brothers, that is something that you need to take there and really focus on that. As tempting as it may be, leave these women alone on the job. Again, if shorty like you, let her let you know that off the clock. But on the clock, let's say shorty pull up on you and she's trying to talk. You got to be like, look, sister, boom, boom, boom. Um, I think you cool and all. Uh, maybe we could chat outside of work respectfully. You know what I'm saying? We're both at work. We got a job to do here. I want to keep everything professional. You know what I mean? I want to be within guidelines within the company. I want to respect you at the same time as a young lady. After work, we could probably hang out, have a drink, do whatever, whatever. Off the clock. Off the clock. Because when you do these things on the clock, that is when you get charged with sexual harassment. And before you know it, you're done. You lost your job. You don't want that to happen, guys. So that being said, let me get back to the tapes. Let's go. Because if you showed him signs that you didn't want what he was doing to you. What? But you, so hold up. You're accusing Christian if you didn't show him signs that you didn't want that. But what about you and Bam? What about you and Bam? Did you show Bam the signs that you didn't want him to touch you? Did you show him those signs? Did you tell Bam, I don't want you to touch my butt? Did you tell Bam that? Did you tell Bam, look, fam, I don't want heavy meat on me. I don't want to take the heavy meat. That's not what I'm into. Did you tell Bam that? Or did you just allow him? See, here's the thing, Haas. How could, how could Bam fide you? You said that he fied you. 
So you, you pulled your pants down as a young man, respectfully. This is what you did. You didn't protest. You were not forced. You pulled down your pants willingly. Bambada greased you up, squeezed your cheeks. And then he thighed you and put heavy meat on your butt. This is what he did. You allowed him to do that with no fight, no protest. What does that say? That say that that's what you wanted. That's what it says. And this went on all throughout your teenage years, fam. You're in, listen, man, you're in no position. You're in no position to judge when you're a hypocrite. Now, if you were a person that vocalized to bam, yo, I'm not really into this. This is wrong. Then we could say, okay, at least he did what he had to do. And bam, physically grabbed you and tied you up and thighed you. Then now I can say, okay, you know, at least he put up a fight. But in none of your stories did you say you put up a fight with Bam or you told Bam this is wrong because you were with it, bro. You're a hypocrite and you're not supposed to be talking about these topics. Literally. He wouldn't feel so comfortable keep on doing it because he know that your energy is off. So he gonna move on to the next one. But you kept going around swinging your ass in front of him. So hold up. You're, you're shaming Christian by saying he kept coming back swinging his ass in front of him when you kept coming back to bam to get fired <laughs> make it make sense people make it make sense you kept coming back over and over and over to a man that clearly was violating you this is what you were doing and the way that, you know, predators resent the prey that gets away. So when you don't say yes. How he calling a grown man a predator when he's a grown man? But you're a grown man and you keep talking about Bam. You live off the Bam story and you're a grown man. Why haven't you forgive Bam and move on? What about the kids you touch, Haas? Could you answer the million dollar question, fam? What about the kids you touched and violated? The kids you put heavy meat on? The kids you thighed? Because you said in that video where, um, what's his brother? Um, Sonetta was interviewing you at Bronx River. And you said that when you're touched, you, you go on to do it. And you can't be trusted. So... This is something you practice, bro. You did this to other people's kids. What about those victims? Have you gone back to those victims and said, look, I'm sorry for what I did? Did you go back to those boys that you touched and apologize for what you did? Did you do that? I bet you didn't do that. And that's sad. They both grown men. If they indulge in sex, they'll be sword fighting. You got all that energy to try to shame this guy but yet you were sword fighting with Bam and you were in photos with him. All I'm saying, bro, and especially to the people that are viewing is that Hassan Campbell is hypocritical, man. He's a hypocrite. And you folks that view him need to hold him accountable. He's not supposed to be talking about Christian at all. He shouldn't even be talking about the topic. Huh? When you don't say, okay, I'll acquiesce and... Hold up, look who's talking. You talking to the 12-year-old little boy? Notice that. Somebody just somebody just questioned him and called him out on his BS. And he was like, you talking about the 12-year-old boy? Now he changed in the subject, acting as if though he was 12 years old and didn't have no control over the situation as if though he was forced when he was literally a willing participant with Bam. Listen, listen to him. You talking to the 12 year little boy that the grown man was coming after? That's who you talking to? Yeah. That's who's talking. You talking about a grown man versus a 12 year old little boy. 
you weren't a 12 year old little boy. You were a young man and you knew right from wrong. You knew right from wrong and you allowed that man to put heavy meat inside you. This is what you did, Haas. And there's no way around it. So just like Christian was a willing participant in the industry, you are a willing participant with BAM. And you can't run from that truth. And it's interesting how all the people that come to your platform, you block them. You block everybody. Anybody that challenge you, you block. People could say your name in my live chat all day. It doesn't, bo it doesn't bother me one bit. But for some reason, you get bothered when people come to your platform and ask questions. I mean, even the other day you talked about something and you was like, what you had did, you were, you were telling people to block anybody that try to promote those other channels, which is my platform and New Breed's platform. You literally told your moderators to block them. Let me see if I can pr bring up that tape. Hold on a second. If they come in here trying to promote them other channels, block their ass out of here. Wow. You heard that? Listen. If they come in here trying to promote them other channels, block their ass out of here. That's how Hassan is. Anytime anybody go to his platform from mine or New Breed's channel and mention our names in his live chat, they get blocked because Hassan Campbell fair Ringo TV reactions and New Breed Global Truth. He, he fair, they fair those platforms. For some reason, Hassan cannot respond with any sort of intellect to say, you know what, let me respond to the questions. Let me find out what these guys are talking about. But no, he can't. Because the questions that we ask really put him to the fire. You know? Like I said, when did you stop touching children, Haas? How many kids have you destroyed? How many lives have you ruined? Because you were touching them and now a lot of these young brothers out here are confused about their sexuality because you introduced them to something that they weren't used to. You introduced them to heavy meat. They weren't accustomed to that. And now you broke them in. And now these guys are literally walking out here confused. Could that be a reason why your own son got violated, Haas? Haas, could that be a reason why your own son got violated? Because you said publicly that your son is living the alternative lifestyle. You said on Math Hoffa, and we got the tapes, where you said that there's a rumor that he was molested just like you were. So my thing is, you didn't get revenge for your son. You didn't get revenge for yourself. But you have all this smoke to talk about Christian and what he should have done to his predator. We talking about a grown man that wanted to be in Hollywood. So he stayed around the door and tried to maneuver his way around the door. But you walked through the door on Vlad TV. You sold your soul, you sold your audience, you let all sorts of people that followed you down. Once you went through that door, you think that's gonna go away? No, the public still remember, Hassan Campbell walked through the door. Hassan Campbell walked through the door. And this is why what happened to his son happened because he was touching boys at a young age and God don't like ugly. You went out there touching other people's kids and the same thing happened to your son. It's just simple as that. As cold as the truth is, that's what happened. You touched somebody's kids, they came back and they touched yours. I'm not making this up. You said this yourself. You said that they touched your son and that your son is gay. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, it got so bad that Hassan was making fun of his own son. It's really sick stuff, man. But uh, anyway, let me get back to this tape. Matter of fact, there's another tape. Hold on a second. Let me take this one. Let me, okay. This one is paused. All right, let me, because there's another tape. Because I only, I'm not uh, reacting to his entire stream. I just kind of clicked on two sections of his live and screen recorded it so I can address these particular points. Let's play the tape. Hold on a second. Reached out to the prettiest man that he could find. Okay. You a man, right? 
You a man in Hollywood, right? You understand that there's doors, right? No, you try to maneuver around the door. You try to get around the door. There's no getting around the door. There's no getting around the door, but you went through the door on Vlad. You went through the door, Haas. Talk about it. And now you out here talking all this crap. I mean, you know what's so hypocritical about Hassan Campbell? He was talking about how, you know, uh, these are the last days. We're worrying about celebrity gossip and all this other stuff. And that's literally what he do. <laughs> like, he's literally talking. He literally was talking about, you know, everybody just, listen, fam, if you were to stop talking about celebrity gossip, you won't get a YouTube check. <laughs> So the last thing you're going to do is stop talking about what brings in the bread. So please stop. You're just misleading your audience every single day. And this is the thing that I don't like, is that you continually mislead your audience and you're not being truthful with them. Are you going to acquiesce and take this movie that's going to make 60, 70, 80 million dollars? Are you going to take this, this picture? Are you going to go to that late night audition, that late night table read? Listen no. to him. You ain't good me like that. I mean, beat, shot at, stomped out. Listen. More than most of the people that are here on this live put together. Now, he just said that he was beat, shot at, more than anybody in the live. Now, remember, when I did my live stream about this, I addressed what he said right there. Hassan Campbell is now regurgitating all the things that I've talked about. Listen to what Haas says now. P, I'm going to call you in a minute. I'm not going to do it. You've been beat, shot at, stomped out, which means you tough, right? And you let a man grab your meat? You let Bam thigh you, bro. You have the nerve to talk about Christian in terms of another man grabbing his meat, but yet you allowed Bam to give you head, bro. These are things that you said, Hassan, from your own mouth. You said that Bam Bada gets strength and power from consuming young men meat sauce. That's what you said. So these are some, some of the things that you were engaging in while at Bam's house. Not only was he thying you, he was giving you head. Matter of fact, there's a video on YouTube right now where Hassan Campbell himself, listen fam, when I tell you these things, I'm not making this up. There's a video on YouTube right now of Hassan Campbell saying that uh, he would get head from Bambada. Literally. And, and like I said, the videos are too disturbing. That's why I don't play those particular videos. Some sick stuff. This man have a lot of a lot of sick content that is floating around on other people platforms of him saying some weird stuff and he talked about how he feel like calling up bam to get some head and i'm looking at this thing like yo how could you judge anybody man when this is what you do bro like you are a willing participant a willing participant yeah there's a video fam there's a video of him saying these things just like there's a video of hassan campbell saying he would violate somebody's daughter, bro, at 12 years old. This is what Hassan Campbell said. I don't understand why people follow this guy, man. And I didn't even know this guy was about that mess. I didn't know this is the things that he talked about on YouTube. I thought he just talked about rappers and the industry and stuff like that. Or the door and, you know, the sacrifices, which is really not his original content. Just in case anybody are viewing right now, when you hear YouTubers like myself or anybody talk about the blood sacrifices, the rituals, um, the oath, the industry, the director's couch. These lessons, these talking points came from a content creator named Yash Kara, right? Yash Kara is the original content creator that started to share the insight about the music industry because he was in the industry or learn these things about the industry by trying to be a part of it in terms of being in the music business and various other things. And he uncovered the dark side of the business. And he came on YouTube in the early days 
when I came on YouTube in 2006, Yash Kara was doing his thing on YouTube as well. Somewhere around the 2007, 2000, yeah, around like 2007, 2008, he was on YouTube. So he's an OG. And his main content was talking about the blood sacrifices. That's all he talked about day in, day out. And he used to get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views, millions of views. And now all of YouTube talk about the blood sacrifices, but they don't give him no credit. Only on Ringo TV Reactions, you'll get the history of YouTube. And we also give proper credit to those that had original talking points. Right? So when you listen to Haas talk about the door and the sacrifices, that's not his message. It came from Yash Kara. Trust and believe. Let's get back to the tapes. And he grabbed your meat and you went back around him again as a grown man without knocking out his teeth? Wow. But I'm not going to air it out, but I'm so fucking close. I'm tired. So you wanted him to knock out his teeth. You want him to put bodily harm on this man, but you didn't do none of that stuff to Bam? You didn't knock out Bam's teeth. So why should he do that? Come on, man. You're playing yourself at this point. I'm tired. And it needs to be told. And the bad part is I'm going to be I'm going to be painted as the villain when I was the one that was sexually harassed for years. Years. Bullied, intimidated, and sexually harassed for years. And I'm going to be painted as the villain because y'all have deified this person. Deified. And then if a person tells you over and over, first of all, in general, you have no right. You won't be considered to be the villain in Hollywood because you know the rules of the game. You know that there's a door. Yeah. You know that if you're not part, if you're not part of Hollywood's in the music industry, rich use of their sex campaigns, everybody that made it clear that there's a door that you have to go through. And instead of you going straight, you stood around these people. You Just like you stood around Bam. You stood around Bam knowing the consequences of the Zulu Nation. You stood around the Zulu Nation even though you knew that you knew that they were molesting kids. Let it make sense, y'all. He knew that Bam was out there doing these things and he remained around him knowing what was going on. Come on, man. You're a hypocrite. You didn't go, you, 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 you didn't go straight and move away from it. You stayed in the environment and set traps. And you stayed in the same environment recruiting other kids to come to Bam's house. I really believe that Hassan was recruiting kids to be victims of BAM. The more I look at this story with Hassan, the more it looks like he was a recruiter for BAM. I'm gonna keep on pushing up and kept on recording and kept on recording and see the crazy part about it is, I bet you nine times out of 10, one of them niggas in the industry, allegedly, cause I gotta say allegedly, I guarantee you he got molly whopped by one of the men. He ain't make it as far as he made it without doing something. He fronting. Just like you fronting. You ain't make it as far as you made it without walking through the door. Because in order for you to make it, you had to get molly whopped by Bam. You understand? You were Africa Bam Bada's woman. That's who you was, Haas. And you've been hiding this truth for so long. And it's like what you do is you project your own insecurities and fears, doubts, and, and issues on other people. Because deep down inside, you lost your manhood. And you're trying to get it back. Just like Christian is trying to get back his manhood. He already lost it already. I'm sure Christian did some unthinkable things in order to get a check in Hollywood. And he kind of regret it now. He's looking back. He's like, look, I'm tired of this. I've been taking heavy meat for a very long time. You know? I mean, you got to think about this. When you're in the industry, man, 
You have to. You have to take heavy meat. <laughs> I kid you not, man. This is not a, this, I'm not even trying to be funny. Like in the industry, you have to take heavy sauce, heavy sauce of meat. And this is happening every single day with these actors and these music, musicians and artists every single day. Now he wanna uh, he wanna look like the only nigga in, high, in in Hollywood that didn't participate with them grown ass men. Come on, we seen with when Tupac put Quincy Jones on blast, and that shit used to be all over YouTube. And Quincy must have spent money to have that shit erased off of YouTube because that shit was all on YouTube. He reached out to the prettiest man that he could find. Why are you calling another man pretty? <laughs> I told you already. You don't call men pretty, you know? You address men properly. A man is addressed as handsome, not pretty. Pretty is what you apply to women. Pretty is what you apply to women, not a man. That don't sound right, you know? No different than if you call a woman handsome. That don't sound right. <laughs> Do you get my point? You don't see no one saying that a woman is handsome. <laughs> right? So you y'all got to really know how to con how to talk when it comes to male and female. But um this guy is a hypocrite, y'all. He's a big hypocrite. I don't like the fact that he's out here trying to lead and teach people when he himself is not even qualified to talk about these issues. He's not because he himself is a predator. He himself uh, created victims. And for some odd reason, people are literally not focused on that. Let me see, because check this out right here. Let me let me show you this clip of Hassan Campbell. Do you think if you would have talked up earlier, it could it, it, you couldn't help nobody else? If I'd have spoke up earlier, my mother would have been dead. Wow. Do you think if you would have talked up earlier, it could it, it, you couldn't have helped nobody else? If I'd have spoke up earlier, my mother would have been dead. He just said that his mother would have been dead if he would have talked about Bam. So you mean to tell me, Haas, if you would have came forward early while you were getting your, your cheeks clapped, your mother would have been put to death. But you have the nerve to talk about Christian as if though his story don't matter and he he's a grown man and all this other stuff. Well, this, this just proves that you're a hypocrite because nobody would have killed your mom if you would have came forward. Your excuse is to say that as if though you were protecting your mom. So so you're telling me that your mother knew you were taking wood the whole time because for you to say I couldn't speak on it because if I would have did they would have killed my mom. So you're telling me that your mother knew you were taking heavy meat and had no problem with it, had no problem with her son going to Bam's house. So she knew you were going there to take heavy meat to protect her from getting killed. That's basically what you just said when you said that. You're basically telling us that your mother neglected you, that she knew you were getting violated but didn't care. This is sad, man. Like you're literally exposing the fact that you had no real um, family structure to begin with. And now let me also throw this out there for the court of uh, public opinion. This is what Hassan Campbell had to say because he talked about Christian willingly doing things and how he wanted to be a part of the club and all this other stuff. Let's see how Hassan Campbell talk about another grown man. Since he want to talk about grown men and, oh, you're a grown man, let's see what he talks about with grown men. Let's see. If I see Doggy Diamonds, I'm going to knock you out of my fuck. You're going to be the only nigga I f Not Ben. I'm going to knock you out of your butt. Wow. If I see Doggy Diamonds, I'm going to knock you out of my fuck. You're going to be the only nigga I f Not Ben. I'm going to knock you out of your butt. Wow. And, and, wow. Well, this is it's really crazy. <laughs> so you're going to knock a man out and put heavy meat inside of him, Haas? <laughs> I just want to know.
This is what he said, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not making this up. I'm just sharing my commentary about this truth. That's all I'm doing, right? So what are your thoughts about this situation? You know, what exactly is your thoughts? Leave them in the comments. Let me know what you think of the stream. I didn't even plan on doing this particular stream, to be honest. I was supposed to talk about another story. And um, because of this one, I said, you know what? Let me come out and do this. But uh, I might come back on later with another one. Or I might just go to doing some other work behind the scenes. Since I got the studio up and running, I might do some content that is uh, pre-recorded because I can get a lot of work done, and I can probably have that posted on my other channels. Because I got to put I got to put some content on the Ringo TV Raw channel. I haven't been over there in a minute, so I got to put some content over there as well. So there's a couple of stories I want to address, and I might do those while the studio is up right now. You might just get, grab something to eat and catch a movie. But I wanted to talk about this because Hassan is a hypocrite and he shouldn't be talking about victims because he's a predator himself. Um, he, he likes to downplay other people that have been, I guess, in similar situations like him. And he's doing it to minimize their story so that he becomes the talk of the town. That's all he do. It's, it's similar to how Charleston White, right after uh, the breakup of, you know, Offset and um, Cardi or whatever the case is, he's out there trying to shoot his shot, right? Like when you see stupid stuff like that, it's to go viral. That's how these people are. It's all for attention. And this is what Hassan is doing. He don't care about victims. He care about the views. He care about his numbers. That's it. Again, to all of you who rock with Hassan, I want you to ask him, what exactly is he doing for the community in terms of children that have been touched by adults? What exactly is he doing? Is he, is he starting programs? Is he going to have any upcoming speaking engagements where he will be bringing other speakers that have dealt with this kind of trauma and abuse so that they could bring awareness to kids so that children are able to have a voice and feel comfortable to talk about these stories. Do you see him doing that? No, because again, he don't care about the children. He don't care about these issues. It's a gimmick and he capitalized off of the pain of real victims. See, some of you out there, you were really molested forcefully meaning somebody really grabbed you as a kid and violated you some of you out there and you were fearful and you were in a situation where you couldn't really figure out how to get out of it you're a real victim Haas is playing on your emotions he's playing on the fact that you really experience these things and that is how he builds his audience by playing on the emotions of real victims that have really suffered and he win you over into his web of deception and he keep you there year after year praising him as if though he's some sort of freedom fighter when in the end all he's doing is just trying to get his numbers up to make some money he never got bam arrested he never filed a lawsuit to put him in a position of paying him for his pain and suffering he never did nothing. What does that say about him? What does that say? He's not really trying to get justice. He's not really trying to bring about any change. As long as he's the talk of the town, that's all he cares about. The numbers. He's addicted to the numbers, the views. That's it. So if you're a real victim that suffered understand that Haas don't care about you. He don't. The only thing he care about is the bottom line, and that is money. That's it. Because if he cared about victims, he would not be making a mockery of Christian due to his situation. He would side with Christian. You would think that victims would side with victims and bring awareness to these type of stories. But no, not Hassan. And this is sad. He's just waiting for that, that check, and that's it. 
Let me see how my numbers is doing. That's it. That's all he care about. So that being said, we're going to be back with more, um, more content later on. I'm going to go get me something to eat and do some more content. If I feel like going live again later on, I might do that. But uh, I might just do some other content for my other channel. And then I will stream in the morning somewhere around probably like I don't even like saying when because I might end up be doing something else and you might end up expecting that I'm going to be there and I'm not. So I'm trying to put together a schedule. It's like I'm all over the place at times. I want to put a schedule up so that's like people know when I go live at a certain time every single day. That way they just know, oh, Ringo's on. So rather than you getting a notification, you know that at such and such time, I'm going live. That's what I'm pretty much trying to focus on so that I can get all my subscribers really locked in on when we're going to do videos. That way, rather than sitting around waiting for a notification, you already know tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. or 12 p.m., Ringo's going live. So if I could do that consistently every day, you're going to get so accustomed to it rather than waiting for a no notification, you know to just turn on, turn it on because you know I'm going to be live. So I'm trying to focus on that right now. Um, let me see. Okay. All right. So we're going to get up on out of here. Um, let me see. Shout out a few of these cash apps real quick. And then I got to take care of some business behind the scenes. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, this is an interesting story. I might talk about this. Let me see. Do this real quick. Send this thing to myself. Okay. I might do a story about that. Yeah, so again, Hassan Campbell is a hypocrite. He trying to shame this particular guy, Christian Key, yes, or whatever his name is. And uh, we're not going to tolerate that. We're going to talk about these issues. So let me see. Let me get this thing set up here. I got so many videos on this thing that I really wish OBS had like a color, like a way to color, um, color code things. Maybe they do in an update and I don't even know. But I got to check. I might have to send them an email about that. That way, when you're streaming and you have things in your list, like your sources, you can color code it so that you kind of know where you're at. And like, let's say if you have video clips, you can color code them green. You could color code images blue. That way, it's like you, you know where you're at. I think that they should do something like that. Maybe they have it already and I just don't know. But um, let me give a few shout outs here. Um, shout out to Ladarius for the five dollar support. Ladarius, Brandon for the three, and Britt, Brett for the dollar. The dollar support. Hold on a second. Let me get this music thing going. Hey. Oh, hold up. I know who this... <laughs> I know who this lady is. I ain't gonna say who it is, but I know who she is. Right? But, um, yeah, it is what it is. Somebody probably like, Ringo, who, 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 who? <laughs> nah, fam. I'm not gonna tell you. I'm not gonna tell you. Because at first... Whoa. Whoa. Almost made a mistake again. Let me see. Let me turn this off over here. Hold on a second. Turn that down. See what I mean? Because these things are not color-coded, fam. So it's like I got things on different keys and whatnot. Actually, I have it set up wrong. I'm supposed to press uh, a button on the side. I'm supposed to do that. So I'm going to set it up the right way because I have it set up bad. Like my key, um, which I'm call the thing with my effects, I have this. I have this right here on the wrong place. That's because when I was going live 
several days back, what I did is I was supposed to put it as a scene. I was supposed to put it as a scene, not as a source. It was supposed to be as a scene so that it's on a button on Stream Deck. That way, when you press that, it's separated from the other stuff. I didn't set it up. I'm going to set it up the, the correct way. I'll do that probably after the stream. I'll set it up the, the correct way because I hate when I'm doing a show and I go back and it's, it just start making all that noise and, and whatnot. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so let me get back to these shout outs real quick. You know what I mean? Let me see uh, what we got here. Because remember the last time I, had, I did the same mistake and at the end of the stream, I clicked back and then the same music came back in. <laughs> um, let me see. Where is this thumbnail? Where is it? Uh, is this it? Yeah, okay. Let's keep that there. Now, um, where is that thing? Okay. All right, so we got that. All right. So we shouted out um, Ladarius, Brandon, um, Britt. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got Clint and Sherelle. Sherelle in the building. What's going on? Clint for the five. Sherelle for the fifteen. Appreciate your support. crazy fam um somebody in the chat said put christian on the screen shirtless us brothers don't want to see that <laughs> you know what's so amazing about this is that you ladies right let me let me talk to you ladies for a minute because it's amazing a lot of you ladies right i don't know what it is about the sisters man but like it's very evident right that christian play for the other team right it's very evident and it seemed like, I don't know. And I'm just I'm just kind of thinking out loud. Now, I don't know if you want to see him on the screen because you're attracted to him or you just want to see the photo. But if, you, if you're wanting to see him on the screen because you're attracted to him, this is, this. and I'm, just, I'm not saying that that's what you're doing. I'm just saying because it, it sounds like that. It, it, it almost appears as though women are more attracted to guys that play for the other team. And this is why a lot of real men, a lot of masculine brothers that are about serious business, y'all can't really coexist with them because being around masculine energy, it's like you're just not happy with that. You're more likely to want to be around a guy that is sword fighting with some other, some other dude. I don't get it because I see this even on his page where women are like going crazy over this guy. And this guy is literally in films doing scenes with men kissing and i'm trying to figure this out ladies like what exactly are you like what are y'all doing like i don't know man it's just it's something sick that's going on in this world i just don't understand that you know it's just like with these guys out here it's like a lot of them they're confused you know but uh let's see what we got man let me see how you know he play for the other team unless y'all are teammates so we're going to play that game. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to do that, right? We're, we're going to play that game again. Like, do we have to go there? So, so let me get this straight. I'm asking you a question, lady. Like, why is it that you ladies are attracted to guys that play for the other team? Now, think about this. Simple question. Where is Christian Kiev's woman? <laughs> what woman do he have? What woman have you seen him with? He don't got no woman. And this is a problem and a red flag that a lot of you ladies should be able to see. But for some reason, you don't want to see it. But you'll project on me what he is. Shame, guilt, insults, and the need to be right, Kevin Samuels. <laughs> you know, when they really don't have nothing better to say, they'll just accuse you of being gay just like him. 
My point is the man. All right, look, let, let, let me let me ask you this as a woman, right? Would you have a problem with your man doing gay scenes in a movie? Hypothetically speaking, as a woman, would you as a woman have a problem with your man, husband, having a career doing gay scenes with men, kissing men, sleeping with men, fondling men in movies? Would you would you have a problem with that? And I'm talking to uh, Paige. I'm talking to Paige. Answer the question, Paige. Come on. Let's have the conversation. Are you scared? Would you have a problem with that, Paige? Nowhere to be found, right? <laughs> Paige, I'm asking you a simple question. Would you have a problem with that? So you won't have a problem with him doing gay scenes in a movie. You won't have a problem with that. Now, you know you messed up, right? <laughs> you do know you messed up, right? You know you messed up. You, you do know that. <laughs> See, Paige, I'm not playing checkers. I'm playing chess. If you don't have a problem with him playing gay roles in movies, my next question is, if he's cheating on you with a man, do you have a problem with that? Checkmate. Checkmate. Do you have a problem with that, Paige? Now, you just said you don't have a problem with him doing gay roles in a movie. So if you don't have a problem with him kissing on men in a movie, you don't have a problem with him sleeping with men in a movie, then surely you shouldn't have a problem with him cheating on you with a man in the real world. Come on now. Answer the question, Paige. Let's stop playing games. You and the one who step up to the plate. You're talking to a man now. You just said you don't have a problem if he's doing gay scenes in a movie. You don't have a problem if he's acting, kissing men, sleeping with men. You don't have a problem with him depicting images of him doing these things. So my question is, if you're with him and he's your man and he's cheating on you with another man and he like taking heavy meat in his back door, do you got a problem with that? And would you forgive him and continue the relationship even though he liked dark meat inside of him? Come on, Paige, answer the question. What are you waiting for? You scared? Answer the question. Because what this is going to prove is that you're a hypocrite. You're trying to defend this, but when you're questioned, you can't speak. You just said you don't have a problem with him doing these scenes. I just told you that this is what this man is doing. We talked about this yesterday. You understand? We talked about this. But now look at you. How is anybody to take you serious? How old are you? Did you graduate high school? I just asked you a question. You can't answer it? Do you have a problem with Christian Kies if he's your man? And he decides to cheat on you with another man. Would you have a problem? Come on. You don't got no problem? Yes, no. Guys, do you see exactly what's going on here? And these are the ladies that you think you can wife up. They can't even answer simple questions, guys. They condone men that get down with the other team. They don't mind him being an actor doing all of that stuff. But when you bring it a little bit closer to home by saying, well, if your man is cheating on you with another man, would you have a problem with that? How come you're not here to say, no, I don't have no problem? 
How come you're not saying that, Paige? Paige, where are you? Paige, why can't you answer the question? You see, brothers? Notice how Paige cannot answer the question. You see what's going on? Newbreed said, shaking my head, these women don't mind getting with closet cases. She into women too. Wow. This is what I mean, brothers. This is what I mean. And you're wondering why we have all of these problems. I asked a simple question. You said you don't have a problem with him accent, acting in these roles. I set you up just so you could say nope. I told you I'm playing chess. And I made you make that move because you thought that I wanted you to say the other thing. No, I wanted you to say that just so I can say what I'm saying now. If Christian is your man and he decide that he's going to go out there and get some D, would you have a problem with him doing that? You know? You said 80% of men DL anyway. Was your daddy on the DL? Can you confirm that for us, Paige? Was your daddy on the DL? Was your uncle on the DL? Was your grandfather on the DL? I mean, think about what you're saying here. You're saying 80% of men are on the DL. If that's the case, how is the world populated with all these kids? Think about what you're saying. 80% of men are on the DL. I mean, is this what women always do? Deflect, move the goalposts, can't answer questions, shame, guilt, insult the needs to be right? I asked you a simple question. You still didn't answer the question yet. Is this how you conduct yourself when you're around a man? So you mean to tell me if a man sees you as a potential mate and he decides, you know, Paige, I've been talking to you for a while and I'm trying to get to know you better. Perhaps we can build a relationship. Is this how you conduct yourself in the real world when a man is talking to you? Can't even answer a simple question, yes or no. And see, guys, this is why I don't take none of these women serious. Because you can't. They don't answer questions. Simple question. You know, but for some reason, can't answer the question. She don't have a problem with him doing dirt in films. Now, let me let me bring you to that video. Let me bring it back up. Because this is the video clip. Let me see if I can bring this in. Let me see. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. I mean, I have it on this thing, but for some reason, I must have misplaced the video. But let me put this video here. Hold on a second. Let me do this. Um, let me see. Okay. So, um, wait, something just jumped. Okay. Let me play this particular tape. Hold on. Wait, I got to get the volume. All right. Now, this is from the film Legends of Tomorrow. Now, what's crazy about this, ladies and gentlemen, is there are multiple parts to this video which prove and show that Christian Kies play for the other team. And it's obvious in the films that he portray himself in. Um, Paige is still talking, says black men are toxic uh, femininity. So why are you watching me? Why exactly are you watching me if black men are this way? Why do you watch me is a good question. Paige, why do you watch Ringo TV? Why do you watch me? Since you have a hatred for men. Like, seriously, I, I just don't get it. Because I don't see white women here doing this. I don't see Asian women doing this. I don't see them doing that. And I'm trying to figure out where does this hatred come from? I don't know you personally. But one thing I don't see is I don't see women of the other nations coming over here talking like this. I don't see white women saying that 80% of black men are on the DL. I don't see that. I only see that coming from my women. And it's rather disturbing to say the least, because you would think that our people would have some sense of understanding history and would learn how to 
build our nation. But this divide and this separation that we have in today's culture is very, very serious, you know? And it's really sick. And again, it goes to show the mentality, brother. See, if there's anything you brothers got to listen to and learn is look at her comments and understand this is how they think, guys. This is how they think. This is why I tell you, don't marry them. Don't do it. Recreational use, don't marry them. And be, be very careful having children with them. Because if this is the way they think about you, it's no wonder Cardi B ended her relationship with Offset because of a rumor. Who cares if Offset went out there and tapped some other woman's tail? Who cares? He's a man. Cardi B learned that her cooch is not all that. As a man, you're going to deal with another woman regardless. But you ladies be coming to the table thinking that you can control a man. And a lot of times, a lot of the hurt and the pain that a lot of women carry, as you can see displayed by said female in the chat, is coming from a place of bitterness due to all the experiences they had in the world with other men. You know, a lot of times it could come from a lack of a father. Daddy wasn't in the home. Um, a lot of issues. And, and again, you have to always look at the source. If if dad wasn't in the home, father figure wasn't there, you got to question mom. You got to look at her choices. What did she do? And blame her for not choosing the right kind of guy. Because to be honest with you, a lot of us came from poor situations where mothers made terrible choices in men and then indoctrinated the children into believing that the father never loved them when that's not even true. The father don't even know he has children because the mother was in the streets. The generational curses of our people goes deep. So to the sister who refuses to answer the question, um, you have to understand that life is very serious. And I think that you should take life serious because not, not being able to answer a simple question, it says a lot about you as a woman. It says a lot. I mean, think about what you're saying here. You're saying that my, your father is married to your mother and own an oil company. Who cares about that? Nobody cares about an oil company. The topic is not about an oil company. You just said 81% or 80% of men are on the DL. Now you're telling us that your father is married and has an oil company. If, listen, if your father is married and owns an oil company, as if though anybody cares about the oil company, why are you watching me? <laughs> I mean, the arrogance and the pride of these said females, like, now, think about this, guys. Now, now what does an oil company have to do with the conversation? <laughs> Nobody cares. You don't own the oil company. <laughs> Who cares? Where is your husband? <laughs> Let's have the conversation. Paige, where's your husband? Do you have a husband? Paige, do you have a husband? I mean, a woman that come from great riches, has a father that has an oil company. He should be a billionaire, <laughs> right? As a woman that comes from a prestigious family of excellence and class, <laughs> surely, surely you should have a husband. <laughs> I need a cup of tea. Surely you have the riches and the wealth, and for some reason, you don't have a husband. <laughs> I would like to get a cup of tea. <laughs> Telling you, man. I don't know what these women are doing, fam, but they're not doing right, guys. Seriously.
So let me get back to this tape that I was wanting to show you here. Let me see if I can play this thing real fast. Uh, this is from the movie. Uh, well, let me see. Let me turn this off. I don't want to make the same mistake I did where I was talking for 30 minutes without no volume. Let me see. Okay, let me turn that off. Okay. So this is the film, right, with um, Christian so-and-so. Now, remember, the woman, Paige, wanted to know, she wanted me to post an image of him with his shirt off, which means she's attracted to him. And for whatever reason, I questioned her by saying, well, he do gay scenes in films. Are you cool with that? She said that she's cool with it, that she don't have no problem with him doing gay scenes in movies. Okay, cool. And then I asked her a follow-up question. I asked her, well, since you don't care and you're cool with it, would you, would you be cool if he cheated on you with a man? Which one would be more severe for you? Would it be uh, a man or a woman? Which one would be more severe? And she can't answer the question. But let's take a look at the film so we can see the scene here. Because I want to know what you ladies, are y'all cool with this? I just want to know. John. John. Let me see. In that scene, he went to hell in the movie. The movie was a satanic film and whatnot. But let's see the scene here as he comes out of the shower. Right? Let's take, the, take a look at this. He comes out of the shower. Hey, Johnny. Hey, guys. Get some clothes on. You seeing this? Now, all you got to do on YouTube is type in that name, John Constantine and Desmond. Type that exact line right there, and you will find this video without me censoring it. I have a bunch of black faded stuff all around it to protect myself while I play the particular clip. But you can always go find this and see this for yourself. And they have part one, part two, part three, part four, and five, I believe. And throughout this entire thing, you see exactly what Christian Kiez is doing. So my question to the ladies is, why is it that you're so attracted to men, right, that portray this lifestyle, but yet if that man was your man, in the real world and he cheated on you with a man now you upset <laughs> i don't get it i don't get that let's go now check it out they at the bar he's drinking check him out they looking at each other eyeing each other right now they taking off clothes right now again view the video on youtube is right on youtube you know, I have it censored and covered up a lot. Now they kissing one another. Now you tell me. <laughs> Come on now. John? You okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, <clears throat> this city just brings back memories is all. Notice he just said this city brings back memories. Now think about this for the oil lady. The city brings back memories. Now what brings back memories? The fact that he was with uh, Christian Kies. Now, why is it so hard for women to answer simple questions? Why? It doesn't make any sense. You know, no sense at all. And again, guys, all they do, right, is use shame, guilt, insults, and the need to be right. That's all they could do. If you ask them a question, they'll call you gay, right? Now, think about this, guys. If if you ask these ladies a question, they'll say, how could you say that? You must be gay. But yet they're defending the other guy because you're assuming he's gay. <laughs> they're mad that you're pointing out the obvious. They get upset. You know? See, if he's gay, he's gay. There's nothing that can stop that. My point is, if you are, you should... Be, be honest with yourself and not hide who you are. So my question again, if you have no problem with Christian Kiez playing gay roles in movies, if you have no issues, right, as a woman, then you shouldn't have no issues if he cheated on you with a man or if he was gay. 
Here's a better question, ladies. Would you, let's say if you're a female and you're attracted to Christian, if Christian came out and said, hey, guys, I'm gay, would you have a problem with that? Or will you be disappointed and say, man, I thought he was straight? Because if you say you'll be disappointed, then you just prove me right. You get what I'm saying? And you're a hypocrite because if you don't got a problem with him doing those roles, but you have a problem with him being of the alternative, then something's wrong with you. You know? And it's really, it's really telling. This is why I like doing this kind of content because it exposes the truth and the realities of what you guys are going to be facing in the real world. Remember, said woman says that her father and mother are married and they own, they own an oil company, but she has time to be watching me. <laughs> you know? It's crazy. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Let me see. King Jewel says, why do Paige get a free pass to troll without getting blocked? Okay, I got an answer for you. Hold on a second. Let me take care of that. There you go. No respect of persons, you asked a good question. Why did she get a free pass? First of all, she didn't get a free pass. We're having a conversation. Um, but being that you wanted to know why she got a free po pass, as if though I'm giving her special treatment, I decided to give you the same treatment. Okay? That's about it. Because I'm not here really to play games, you know what I'm saying? Like, seriously. Um, it's a good question, nonetheless. It's a good question, but the thing is... Nobody gets a free pass to troll. Um, I didn't consider her trolling. I'm trying to have a decent conversation with a woman to try to understand her psyche to see if we can have the conversation. She didn't want to have the conversation. She was all over the place, dodging the questions, moving the goalposts, projecting, deflecting, shaming. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, but I, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> right? Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, such and such and such. Well, I, I I know she's blocked. I know that already because she's not answering the question. She's just wasting her time here. You know, I'm trying to uh, be as respectful as possible. And it's like the guests don't want to cooperate. I'm trying to do my thing. You know what I mean? Like seriously, um, when, when, we, when we try to have these conversations with you, it's to better understand the community so that we can make better content. And being that she's a woman who come from a prestigious family of wealth and riches, I just wanted to know, do she have a husband? Because if your daddy and your mother is married, then you should have the blueprint of a successful life, right or wrong. I mean, if your mother and father is married and he, he, he's a, he owns an oil company, then you have nothing but success right in front of you. So you as a woman should have all the success. But if you don't have that, I question said success. You know, I really do. I question it because... If 80% of black men are on the DL, how do you know that daddy's not on the DL? Now, you can't be a respective of persons and say, well, not my father. He's not on the DL. He's, he's good. No, no. You said 80%. That's a lot. 80% mean that the majority of men that are in my live chat are on the DL. We know that's not true. But this is the kind of shame and language that us men have to endure from women every single day. They use DL as a shame and attack on you, but claim they love the LGBTQ community. Make it make sense. Think about what I just said right there, fam. Our women will use shame and language by saying, 80% of black men are on the DL as a shaming language to shame you while at the same time saying they love the LGBTQ community. If you love that community and you respect that community, why, as a woman, 
would you use their lifestyle as a shaman language to put black men down? I'm telling you, gang, it says a lot. It says a lot. It just proved that they really don't love them. They really don't, because if they did, they wouldn't say that. You know? So, hey, we're going to get up on out of here. Um, did I shout out all the cash apps? I think I did. Yeah, I did. Okay, so, uh, yeah. We're going to pretty much get up on out of here, do what we got to do. And um, I'm going to go get make some more content and try to catch up on a lot of these messages people have been sending me on Instagram and whatnot. A lot of people have been sending me a lot of stuff. I haven't been really focused on checking all that info, but I got to check and see what's going on in these streets and um, figure out what I'm going to do. There's a lot of things going on, man. There's so many things. I got to get back on track. You know what I mean? I have a lot of things that I got to do because I'm doing everything by myself. I don't have no staff. You know, I run my entire production myself. Um, Yeah, so, hey... We're going to get up on out of here, man. And and one thing people have to understand about the platform is that we don't tolerate disrespect, right? We don't tolerate disrespect. Like, when you come in, be respectful, right? Be respectful. Don't troll. Um, don't do none of that foolishness because it's not good. We want people to be able to come in, rock out, have fun, enjoy themselves. But don't come in here with the shaming language, the insults, and all that other stuff. Notice, you didn't hear me say that 80% of women are playing for the other team. You didn't see me. You, I don't have to do that because that would be dumb. You know what I mean? Like to say 80%. So if 80% of women are on the DL or whatever the case is and 80% of men are on the DL, then how is the earth being repopulated? Like how are we multiplying? It doesn't make any sense. And the sad and sick thing about all of this, fam, is that it comes from my own people. It's not coming from nobody else. From my own people, fam. My own people hate each other. All by design. The powers that be set it up this way where we're divided. So naturally we hate one another. We despise one another and we do as much as we can to destroy one another. Now think about this. Said female said that mother and father are married and owns an oil company. Are they doing anything for the black community? No. What's the point of telling us they own an oil company if they're not doing nothing to empower their own people? Here's another tad bit of information. For all you know, she's not really a so-called black woman. She could be so-called African, meaning she's not of our people. That's another thing you guys and you ladies have to understand because a lot of times we have people with melanated skin that appear like they're our people, but they're not our people. And the reason why I say that is because she said that they own an oil company. So once you put that in together, you, you factor that in, she's not talking about over here. A lot of times you have women that are African descent because we, we're not African. We're not African-American. We're not black. We're not none of those bywords. But you'll have people from the other nations, they'll come over here and they will say things about our people, making us think that it's our people that are doing this when they're not our people. It's called agents of chaos. Always remember that, guys. Always remember that. Right? So we're going to get up on out of here. I'm going to go grab something to eat, catch up on all the different things that I got to take care of. I got to buy me another computer. I got to buy me another computer. I really got to buy another computer. It's a couple of things that I got to do, fam. 
I mean, you can never have enough computers when it comes to doing content. You can never have enough. Um, I probably have six computers in this room right now. But the thing is, every computer has a task. And I, I didn't realize that the importance of computers, like one computer is not enough, man. You need several computers when you're really running a production, a live show, um, doing content. There's so many different tasks that needs to be done. You need a computer for everything. Like, let's say, for example, like editing. Um, you need a computer that's strictly for editing videos, a computer that's strictly for graphics, a computer that's strictly for this, that. Every computer should have a task similar to a company where you have different employees and they're all doing something different. Same thing with your studio, right? You need to have different, like, for example, if I'm doing music, I need to have a separate computer that's just for music, not for streaming, not for surfing the web. It's strictly for music. And that's it because you don't want no problems with your system, right? So we're going to get up on out of here, man. Um, in case you're viewing, we had a little point in the stream where I was literally talking for about somebody. I think they said like five to ten minutes because I had my channel. My microphone was muted like this. You know, similar to the, what I just showed you right there, I was literally doing that for about 10 minutes straight. <laughs> you know, but nonetheless, we got our points out. We was able to accomplish our task and everything. So guys, um, again, when it comes to the ladies, brothers, focus on your calling, focus on your business, focus on your health and fitness, hit the gym, um, stop chasing women around. Women are going to always be there. If a woman is really liking you, she's going to contact you. She's going to hit you up. She's going to say, hey, I'm in town and I want some D. <laughs> you know, I'm serious, guys. A woman will hit you up. She's like, look, I'm in town. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can hang out, chill and whatnot. And you'll be like, OK, cool. We can go to the telly, have some drinks. You know what I'm saying? Party. <laughs> You know, you don't have to really be chasing women around. They know what they want. You know what I mean, guys? As long as you're taking care of business with yourself, you know what I mean? You're, you're taking care of your health. You know, you're focusing on your money. You're building yourself up. Your credit looking good. Like, my credit score just recently went up, man. Like, it's looking real good, man. I'm, I'm really loving that 800 credit score, man. I'm really loving it, man. Like, I'm really proud because, you know, I, I really came a long way and it's like I'm, I'm really really taking care of business fam because like when I was a teenager you know when I was a teenager I made a lot of a lot of poor choices like I remember when I was a teenager and I got my first credit card right <laughs> I got my first credit card right and I remember first place I went to was Macy's I went to Macy's and I was shopping for me and my friends <laughs> and I thought I, I really thought the money was free. I thought it was mine. I didn't I didn't know I had to pay it back. I, I just didn't know. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? I ran up a crazy bill, man. I ran up a crazy bill, end up owing like damn near ten thousand dollars, bro. <laughs> no cap, man. Like ten ten bands, man. And you know what I'm saying? It was a real mess. And um I had to I had to literally find my way through. And, and sort things out, get get everything in order. But hey, I was I managed to get out of that that situation in my early 20s, early mid 20s. I got out of debt, got out of all the slums of that mess. And um, you know, was able to do what I need to do. And now I'm 46 years young, <laughs> doing my thing, enjoying life. Right? So, shout out to the mods in the building, Tracy in the building, Sherelle in the building. What's going on? I think I seen Rebel for Almighty in the building as well. I'm not sure if I did, but I believe I seen her in the building, or maybe it was in the last video. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm bugging out. So, we're going to get up on out of here, do what we got to do. There's some things I got to do at my studio that I got to I gotta fix. Like, I got to upgrade my lighting. There's something 
Now, for you, it's good, but for me, it's not. You know what I'm saying? But I got to do some upgrades. Um, it's really driving me crazy. I am really tired of it, but I got to do the upgrades. What upgrades are you talking about, Ringo? <laughs> okay, since we ain't doing nothing, we just kind of chilling. I guess I could just ramble on and talk a little bit, right? Ain't nothing wrong with that, right? So, uh, what I got to upgrade? Okay. Glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, uh, the exterior lighting, like the blue lights over here, the pink lights over here, you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is get it on, um, one, like it's one system. Like I'm going to go on Amazon and kind of look up different like lightings. I mean, it's great. It does the job. But the thing is, these are rechargeable batteries. And um, being that they can run out, I have them plugged in via USB power to get five volts of power. And I'm tired of doing that. I want to be able to have the lighting where it's like, like how the lights are over here. Like you see all those lights? That's plugged into the AC power. And it's never going to run out because it's coming right from the current, right? Like the light that's in the corner back there, all the way in the corner, the pink one, that's a battery operated light. Typically for photography to get like certain effects. But what I want to do is have it wired where I can have the lights on at all times and it's plugged in direct. That way, because like, let's say, for example, I didn't have the lighting via USB power, right? and it ran out. Then now if I just did a show, I gotta wait for the damn lights to charge. <laughs> or rather than waiting for them to charge, I have to plug in a bunch of USB plugs all over the place. <laughs> I don't, I don't wanna do that, you know? So I'm gonna look for an alternative where I can have them all set at different colors and they could just plug into the outlet and just do its thing at all times and whatnot. The lights on the chair, these are also bar battery powered. So with this, I don't have a problem with this. It's just everything else. I don't like to have to set up everything and let it go. Um, another thing that I would like to upgrade, I don't even know if it's even possible, is my, my camera. Um what you call it, motorized um, dolly that you're seeing, like how the cameras is moving. Um, I'm actually one of the first people on YouTube to actually have this, believe it or not. All the other platforms that you see utilizing these camera movements where you see like the camera is moving and fading and doing all that, I'm literally the first to do that on YouTube, literally. And what I'm trying to do that is driving me crazy with it is... Um, like when I start my streams, I have to literally program it. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find another one or perhaps upgrade it where you can set a program or a camera move and it's like a total recall. You get what I mean? That's like saved. And all you got to do is just turn it on and it's doing its thing automatically because it's really frustrating when you start a show and you got to set the cameras up. So just for you to know, when I go live and I have all my cameras moving, I literally have to walk to the camera, to the dolly, and I have to program it to move back and forth. I have to do that for each one of these, of these uh, camera angles. And it's time consuming. I don't like doing that. I would just like to be able to turn it on and it's doing the movement by itself without me having to do anything. To me, that would be a game changer. So. I'm gonna look into that to see if there are other dollies out there, motorized faders that will have like a total recall or something where you can program it. And anytime you turn it back on, it remembers the settings previously. Once I could get that sorted, man, I, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be really happy with that, you know? So those are some things that I'm gonna take care of behind the scenes. Um, that being said, we're going to get up on out of here. Appreciate everybody stopping by and whatnot. Um, yeah, man. So, hey, 
y'all take care, man. It's really nothing else to say, man. I'm going to get up on out of here, go get me something to eat. And um, I'm going to work on some more content behind the scenes. Not, I'm not going live. I already made up my mind. I'm not going to go live. I'm going to work on some more content after this to post on the Ringo TV Raw channel. So if you're not subscribed to the Ringo TV Raw channel, make sure you go over there to subscribe. Um, we have a lot of content to to talk about and um, what you call it. I'm going to also talk about another situation that happened in these YouTube streets. For those that don't know, um, Pastor Dow recently got demonetized and... Um, I want to make a video about about that. Look, guys, um, I've made several videos to try to help y'all. You know, I've made multiple videos about these topics and nobody's listening to me. YouTube is not targeting you. We got to get out of that, that YouTube is targeting you because you're speaking the truth. No, um, I've already been demonetized. I know what that's like, and it's because I broke the rules. There is no such thing as freedom of speech on YouTube. We got to stop believing that there's freedom of speech. There's no freedom of speech. YouTube is a business. They have rules that they want all of us to follow. It's just that simple. It's no different than when you go to your job on the nine to five. There are rules that you have to follow. Um, if you break the rules, things are, there's going to be consequences. And the way YouTube handle those consequences is they will take your money. That is their way to say, look, we got rules that you have to follow. You don't want to follow them. We're going to pull the plug on the money. It's going to get your attention. It got my attention, didn't it? I remember when I was demonetized. It don't feel good. When, when this is your business and this is your livelihood and this is what you're working on, that's the last thing you want. So when it comes to monetization and content creation, your content have to be within the friendly advertiser guidelines. Now, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more on another video. Matter of fact, I might do that video separate after this one, and I'm going to upload that one, right? Again, I made several videos about this. Nobody ain't listening to me. And I told y'all, YouTube is out there uh, checking platforms, making sure everything is right. And you're going to get demonetized. I warned all of y'all. Put a one in the chat if you heard me say this a thousand times. Put a one in the chat if you heard me made multiple videos warning the people. I've been warning content creators for a long time. And nobody's listening. So I'm going to make a video. It's going to be the last video. It's going to be the last video I'm going to make to address these issues, to talk about it. Um, one tip that I want to give all content creators. Listen very carefully. If you don't listen to this tip, you're going to get demonetized. Do you understand me? If there's anything, if you're a content creator, you're up right now, you're listening, listen to this tip right here. And this you could take to the bank. If you have a video on your platform and the video is in yellow. Take that video down. You got two choices. Take that video down or turn monetization off of that video. You're driving your car. You're driving. The light turns yellow. What are you supposed to do? Put it in the chat. You're driving your car. The light turns yellow. What are you supposed to do? Put it in the chat. What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do when the light turns yellow? You're supposed to slow down. Caution yourself because it's about to turn red. Might as well you slow down. Yeah, yield to stop. There you go. Yield to stop. That's the proper term. Yield to stop. Okay, so if you're a content creator and your video that you uploaded is in yellow, which means you get limited ads, that yellow is a color code that should tell you slow down. There's something that you're doing that is borderline 
violating the advertiser-friendly guidelines. <sighs> the best thing you can do is take that video down because, look, if the video don't meet advertiser-friendly guidelines, it shouldn't even be on YouTube. Look, brothers and sisters, if you're a content creator, you, you don't like me, you like me, you don't like me, listen to what I'm telling you. If you have videos on your page that are in yellow, delete them. Delete them. Who cares about how many views it gets? Delete it. Take it down. Put it on another platform. Because if it's not friendly for advertiser dollars, then it's going against a guideline. The last thing you want is for YouTube to review your channel and it come to find out you got over 30 to 40 videos that are in yellow. That's not good. And what's sad about this is the way they set the system up, you can click for it to be reviewed by a human. And in some instances, they may put it back green. But my point is their AI system have a way of judging your video to see whether or not it's advertiser friendly. YouTube have rules. You got to go and you got to read the advertiser friendly guidelines. It'll tell you the kind of content that is uh, accepted. Now, I don't want to alarm you like you're supposed to be unfair and you can't speak your mind. YouTube allow you to speak your mind. They allow you to voice your opinions. You could be very critical. You could be criticizing others within guidelines. As long as you're not hurtful, as long as you're not, uh, uh, you know, causing um, others to attack people in terms of violence and all this, then you're good to go. You can, you can express yourself, right? But now they have certain guidelines that if you do certain content, they will deem it not advertiser friendly. And that can cause your whole channel to be demonetized. Serious, not a game. So the best thing to do is rid your channel of all of that content because you know what it is. This is why I don't make content about war. If you notice, did you see me make any content about the war? None. Do you see me make content about Kanye West? You know what's going on right now, right? There's a video up out there where he's going on a rant for 10 minutes. Do you see me doing a reaction with that? No. Do you see me making content about so-called Mr. Tate? Y'all know who that is? Do you see me doing reactions with Mr. Tate in my channel and on my videos? No because YouTube have guidelines. And if you put these people on your platform and something goes wrong, it's on you, bro. It's on you, they got guidelines. For example, let's say for example, a YouTuber got banned from YouTube, lost their channel, they got banned from YouTube. And you're a content creator and you decide to feature them on your platform doing an interview. That violates YouTube's guidelines. You can lose your channel for that. And people do this every day. Y'all putting yourself at risk. So when things happen, you got to own it. So being that Pastor Dow got demonetized, he did something. He did say he broke a rule, fam. Respectfully, he broke a rule. And I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you, based on the video that he uploaded, it had something to do with controversial topics. Go into the guidelines. Go into the guidelines. It tells you, don't do this because there's a thin line. You could talk about things, but if you go too far left or too far right, or hear me out, ladies and gentlemen, even if you're speaking the truth, if it go against the narrative that is the standard narrative of what happened and you try to alter it, you violated the guidelines. You're going to get demonetized.
you know? For example, let's speak in code. And this is real. My mom passed away of cancer on 9-11. Not the 9-11 that you all know, not that day, but it was another 9-11 recently, a few years back. If you were to speak about that and you say something that goes against the established story, you will be demonetized. These are just the rules, guys. It doesn't matter if you feel whatever you feel. Put it on another platform but you can't put it here. Just follow the rules. I know, I get it. These are rules. This is what they want. This is their platform. You trying to make money? You trying to do business? You trying to have content? They have rules. Respect the rules, man. If you're dismissing victims of a particular war or a particular something, you dismiss it like it never happened, demonetize. Channel deleted. Because it's breaking the rules. That's all it is, man. It's not YouTube targeting you because you're speaking the truth. We got to stop that. YouTube is not targeting nobody. When I got demonetized, I broke the rules and I didn't know. And now it's not the time to get demonetized. So you want to protect your platform. So again, I'm going to talk about this in another video. But if you're a content creator and you're listening, if you got videos that are yellow... Take those videos off your platform as soon as possible. Take them down. I'm telling you, take them down, fam. Take them down. Because those videos are breaking the guidelines already. That's why they give you limited monetization. If you read it, it says this video have limited ads or no ads at all. Because it has content that is deemed not suitable for advertisers. That mean that that video that you got is not advertiser friendly. So take it down. Take it off of YouTube. It's not good, bro. What is more important? Being demonetized or taking that video down and put it on Patreon or put it on Instagram or Rumble or TikTok. Put it somewhere else. But don't put it here. You got to protect your platform, fam. The more I learn about these things, the more I talk about these things. And I try to encourage people to really um, take their channel serious and stop thinking that you're responsible for saving the whole world with certain information. Some information you just don't supposed to put it here, man. Don't do it because it's going to only cause you problems. And when it happened, are the people going to be there to really support you? while you're going through the problems, because like I said, it's unfortunate, but things happen. It's just like Pearl got her channel demonetized, Fresh and Fit demonetized. Um, a lot of people are getting demonetized because they're breaking the rules. That's all it is. It's not because YouTube is like, you know what? I don't like them, so I'm gonna demonetize them. No, they want you to focus on t keeping their rules, man. That's all it is. Keep the rules. They don't mind you talk about topics and share your piece. But when you're talking about topics that is deemed controversial, you got to. It's a thin line, bro. A very thin line. Those kind of topics. Just stay away from it, man. Stay away from it. You know. Stay away from certain topics. There are certain topics you just stay away from. Focus on the content that makes you your bread. Focus on the content that is entertaining to your audience. But when you get into deep topics, deep thought, and you get into topics that are super information that deals with real truth, don't post it here, fam. And if you do, put it on a channel that you're not monetizing. Put it on a channel that you're not monetizing. And also... If you put it on a channel that you're not monetizing, don't let it be on the same channel of the same email of your main channel.
I'm giving you a game, man. I'm giving you content creators ultimate game here because when you have a YouTube channel, you can have up to four channels on one email. Four channels. So let's say channel one is your main channel. That's your big channel. Channel two is your backup channel. Channel three is where you post videos that are controversial and crazy. Bad idea. Because it's all connected to the same email. So if the controversial channel, you post all your controversial videos and that channel got terminated, guess what happened? All the other channels got terminated with it. I'm giving y'all free game, man. But they don't like me in these YouTube streets. They never acknowledge me, but I'm giving y'all some of the best information you'll ever get. But are you going to apply it? You know? So I'm going to go make another video where I'm going to talk about these same issues. And I'm going to post that. Um, I might post them as separate videos. I might do short clips, like five minutes, two minutes, one minute. I'm going to do a bunch of clips and post those so that people get basic information. So let's say, for example, if I'm talking about YouTube shorts, I'm just going to talk about that and how that can demonetize your platform. And then I'm going to talk about other things and title it so that those of you that are in these YouTube streets are able to find those videos and apply the information. Because your YouTube channel is your business, guys. And I'm talking about content creators. Content creators, that this is your livelihood. This is what you do. You earn money. This is your gift. This is your talent. This is your business. So you got to treat it like a business. You got to respect what you do and you got to follow the rules, right? So we're going to focus on some content about the rules. Um, I'm going to do some content about the guidelines and try to read them out. And hopefully we can educate the community about the community guidelines regarding uh, advertiser friendly content and that, that it hopefully can create awareness where you'll know where the line can, is drawn. Again, YouTube want you to express yourself. They want you to be a free thinker. They want you to do things, but they got guidelines. That's all it is. It's not about who controls the world and all of this other stuff. Follow the rules. That's all it is, man. We got to understand that principle. Follow the rules. That's it. Once you understand that, you're going to be good to go. Right? So, uh, what you said, put it on Ringo TV Raw. Put what? Because I'm putting my videos everywhere. I'm going to um, make a bunch of videos after this. And um, I might just turn off all the lights and just keep these two cameras on. These three, I mean. And turn the others off. And just focus on these three. And um, or I might just keep them running. It all depends. But I just feel, I feel like I'm in a mood right now to just make a bunch of content. Giving advice about, um, you know, content creation advertiser friendly content the guidelines and so on and so forth this is why a lot of youtube channels like from a lot of you brothers i don't want to call out nobody names to put them on the spot but a lot of you brothers that make content the reason why a lot of your content or a lot of your channels don't grow right the problem is not that youtube is holding you back the problem is that your content is it's not really it's not really content it's like uh you know, like how when you make content back in the days, guys, you just talk about women and just bash women all day, but they're not really offering like solutions. They're not critiquing them. They're not really offering any educational uh, value. They're just kind of just bashing women, bashing women. That's not content, you know, and it's not going to help your channel to grow. If, if that makes any sense, it's not going to help the channel to grow because when you're trying to attract a new audience, that's the, that's the last thing they want to hear is you just bashing women all day not saying you you can't you could critique women you can offer up criticism uh share advice uh do reaction videos but when you make content and it's like like you hate women and i'm not talking about women that just assume you hate women i'm talking about content where you're literally on camera cursing women out uh, saying you can't stand them, and it's like you're just very hateful. That kind of content could never be monetized. 
um, your channel won't grow. Um, you're going to lose your audience. You're not even going to be on YouTube long. It's just not worth it. It's not, that's not content. It's not going to make people want to subscribe and come back and, you know, enjoy your videos. It's, it's just going to make people not like you. You know what I mean? So you got to know how to do this thing. So I'm going to make a couple of videos about that. I'm really in the mood. I'm going to make several videos. I'm going to go grab something to eat. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to make a bunch of short videos that focus on specific, like particular key points. That way, if you're a YouTuber, you can come over here and learn these basic principles to keep you within the guidelines to protect you from possible channel demonetization, possible termination, uh, you know, copyright. We're going to kind of we're going to do a bunch of videos about that. I think it's time. I think it's time for me to do a lot of videos about that. All right. Yeah, you yeah. You got you got to create green, you know, evergreen content. That's what it is. You got to create content that you know is good for the algorithm, content that has a good replay value, um content that solves problems, that answers questions because people come to YouTube every day searching searching for different information. Whether it's about celebrity gossip, whether it's about how to's, a tutorial, uh, music, they come to YouTube searching. YouTube is dependent on the content creator to fill the void of providing the content that people need. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a bunch of videos. I'm going to probably, listen, I am literally going to go and probably make 50 videos right after this. No cap. I'm going to go and make about 50 videos and I'm going to publish them on the Ringo TV Raw channel and this channel. Different videos. I'm going to make a bunch of them. One minute, five minute, ten minute, and talk about different topics and just kind of give you a flood of information that will help you if you listen. Because a lot of you content creators that have platforms, large platforms, and you're doing pretty well, you're making a lot of money, um, some of you are going to get demonetized. Now, some of you guys that are successful in these YouTube streets, I looked at your channels already. I've looked at different things. You're doing great. You're, 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 you're within all the guidelines. You're just, you're flowing. Like you don't have nothing to worry about, but some of you guys, I'm looking at things and I'm like, it's not looking good. Like there's a lot of problems. We're going to talk about that in other videos. So y'all stay safe. Appreciate everybody stopping by. We're going to talk about more of these issues. Um, Pastor Dow, if you're, if you're checking out this particular video, I'm going to have a bunch of videos where I'm going to be talking about the guidelines, different content, what's going on, advertiser friendly, because I'm learning even as I go. It's a, it's a never ending learning process. And YouTube want us to be better creators. They're not trying to, they, they don't want to stop you. You know what I mean? They need your content because you're bringing in the viewers, but we must follow the guidelines. The same way we have to follow the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, YouTube have their commandments. It's just that simple. Even if we agree or disagree, they got their laws, and their laws are not to be played with. Simple as that. We can feel any type of way we want. They got their law, you know? So I learn from the things that I've done. I'm still learning as I go. I'm constantly trying to improve things for myself because um, it's just the way to be. Take this thing seriously. So, hey, I'm going to get up on out of here. Appreciate y'all, man. All right? Um, okay. So we're going to get up on out of here. I got a lot of work to do, a lot of videos to make about these particular topics. Hopefully, when you catch these short videos, you are able to educate yourself about YouTube, the guidelines, and everything else, because a lot of people don't take their channels serious. I take this job very serious. Um, you can see by my production value, I don't play. This is not easy to build. Um, and this is nothing to me. To you, you might see this. You might say, wow, nice studio. I really like it. This is nothing to me, fam. When I tell you my vision of what I want and what I, I know I'm supposed to have is 20 times this, man. You know what I mean? Like the vision that I have is so advanced of what I'm really after and where this thing can go. Like 
a lot of content creators don't realize the potential of how far they can go with this. This is a very, very serious business. It's not nothing to take lightly, man. So I hope you enjoy the videos that I'm going to be producing after this. We're going to really hone in on a lot of key information that's going to make you a better content creator. It's going to make you smarter. Um, it's going to put you in a position where you're going to think like a businessman rather than just somebody to just make videos. Um, all of you up and coming channels, pay attention to these videos because they're going to help you to sharpen your game. And um, it's going to really put you in a better a better position in life to uh, take your, your channel to the next level. So that being said, I appreciate everybody rocking with the platform. Uh, make sure you get the likes up on the stream as you go. Um, it is what it is, man. So Ringo TV Reactions salute you. That being said, we're going to get up on out of here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Money, how I, money in my pocket, pocket. Lights on now. Yeah. Money, making money. money. Niggas be looking at me. Rolling on the block, man, I'm getting paper. Rolling. Looking at me, I'm looking so fly. fly. All of these niggas, they looking at me, man, wishing to die. Chilling in my car, man, I'm getting paper. All of these bitches out here, man, they want this nigga. Nigga, rolling. Niggas be holding out. Don't want to give a nigga his flowers. I'm a boss. See me flexing on the road. Window down. Top down. Shades on. Blinged out. Ringed out. Designer on, nigga looking fly. How could you hate on a nigga that be doing, doing well? Mad niggas, they up in jail. Niggas mad because I'm doing well. All time and I'm smelling good. Niggas out here up in the hood. All day I'm popping. Bodies they dropping. BK, I'm rapping. Niggas out here have stepping. Niggas talking, they bitching up. Online they trolling. Lights on. Drip where people stare. Everywhere. Everywhere, yeah, I'm rolling in the top, top, chilling in the drop, making money, man. I'm doing this non stop, rolling, ha ha. I'm on top now, PK. I'm repping, niggas out here half stepping, speeding through the night, yeah. Window fly, roll the window down, make the music play, play. Rolling through the hood with the top down Making money, making that sound pop yeah. Where the ladies at? Where the ladies at? Where the ladies at? Where all the ladies at? Going up and I be flipping in Came out and I be ripping in Ripping down that top down Rolling with my windows down Okay, y'all We out of here Ringo TV reactions We out of here, fam Peace. We out. If you like our content, consider supporting via Cash App at Dollar Sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on Patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at PayPal.me slash Ringo TV Raw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at Ringo TV Raw. This is Ringo TV Reactions, the only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth, 100% raw and uncut. I'm out. Peace.